The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay, the Red Santee, and just want to let you know that, yes, Olski and I have finally caved in. We've got us up a Patreon. Yes, Turnbuckle Tabloid has a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We've done it. We said, fuck it. If you guys want to be a part of the show a little bit deeper, more in, more in depth, in, in, intense, uh, get more involved in the behind the scenes and be a part of the show in a more intimate and sensuous ways, why not pay for it? Go to Turnbuckle Tabloid's Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of it. Check out the tiers. Things that might be able to fit your needs when it comes to us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So guys, please help us out here. It helps us to build the product, better audio, better apps, better programs, and of course, helps us to build us to be a better podcast, although we're awesome as is but still regardless your 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 contribution your contributions your shillings your 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 bits of change could help us to grow here at turnbuckle tabloid so once again patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid be a part of the extravaganza and the ridiculous and buffoonery that is turnbuckle tabloid join us on social media and as well as all the podcasting outlets and as always enjoy the show All right, this is Anthony Cole of BCW, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. I think that I'm probably getting to the point where I forget the numbers. I think I'm at 967 now. Yeah. 967 for what we're doing here. And you know what? Fuck these. Like, fuck Ron Paul and these fucking individuals out there that believe that New York hasn't done their business, son. Yo, Fauci is like, what the fuck is the rest of the country doing? New York had the highest. Yeah. COVID. We took our punches. We were the worst. We took our punches. And now we're like the lowest. Wanna know why? Because we did what we had to do. I mean we we I mean, right? I mean we're kinda we were stricter than you other states, but it 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 was still strict. Well, everybody is open up. Yeah, restaurants are still good. A week later, oh, maybe we not maybe we shouldn't be open. Maryland Maryland had indoor dining. I mean, granted, it was like literally, bro, the restaurants were like five people could come in and then it was a wait. Right. Like it was very separated, which Dude, three people were in the restaurant. And I was like, hey, you're, you're waiting to be 25 minutes. Is it I'm that like, important? I, because I'm, wow. not, I'm, I'm not an extrovert like that. Um, is it really that important to eat at a restaurant? No. It's just, oh, okay. I, I, think, I think now because we haven't done it in a while, it's like the fear of missing out or the fear of like – or just wanting to go do it to do it. I could eat, I could take out and bring food to my crib every day and I'll be all right. Oh, okay. I'm just one of those people. Like I, I, I don't I don't. Some see people it. some people use um some people really enjoy going out to eat just because that's the only time they go out of the house. Sorry, but for me it's like I could order out every day and come back to the crib and I'll be fine. I prefer being home. I can watch my shows. <laughs> there's not, usually there's bullshit on uh, at the restaurants. Chili's usually has like the really bad MLB games on, not the, like the Mets or anything. They have right. like the Marlins. So it's like. Do you really want that amb- that ambiance of the uh, hey? Would you like a new opening of uh, our new entrees? Was it something there? Yeah, I never took it. I, I never took this whole eating indoors thing. I guess it's I, I, the only time you really think about doing it is if you're on a date or some shit. I, I never really cared about it. Well, uh, about what? Eating, eating in fucking restaurants and all that. It's a white thing. Is it? <laughs> Yeah. Do you not see your area over here? They're lit outside. They don't care. Yeah. It's, and even being home, I'm fine with being home. Like whatever. It's it's kind of. I think it's because it's it's a thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
because it's been gone now people miss well, the fact that, that yeah exactly i think it's the luxury and like uh, uh people taking it uh people just being um never having to, ch- to change it's like why can't i do this well, you know, uh, yeah, it, it, it's them being mad of change, and uh, it, it's okay for me. Like I said, you and me are kind of the same person. I can stay home all day, and I'll be all right. I find things to do, and I can bring, eat my food in front of watching The Office. I'll be all right. Right. So whatever. It is what it is. Um, other than that, like, <sighs> we got to progress, guys. Honestly, we have to move forward. Get better. And uh, by getting better, the first step is uh, red tomorrow morning at 1030 in the morning. Going to the jungle, <laughs> going to the jungle, ladies and gentlemen. If you thought American Gladiator was bad, if you thought Wipeout was funny, <laughs> well, I have a new show for you, ladies and gentlemen, and it's none of them. It's called Game Wars. What the hell is that? A bunch of people in their 30s waking up early in the morning to line up to get a possible pre order for the PS5. <laughs> And you are one of the contestants, my man. That is so – so, we, we spoke about it last week. You got yours. I got mine, but I, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with everyone here. If I go and meet up with Red tomorrow morning after my meeting and there's, a, there's, a, there's enough for me to pre-order, I'm going to pre-order at GameStop and then just cancel my Amazon because I intend on trading consoles to get this for free. And if I could do that at GameStop in one clean swoop and not having to transfer the money into my bank and all that shit, I'd rather just do that. But I, I have a lockdown on Amazon right now for mine. But um, late PlayStation this week actually apologized for the mess up, which, by the way, g- kudos to you guys because Walmart should be the ones apologizing. They should. Wal- and Walmart didn't. Walmart should be the ones apologizing. But they announced that they're making consoles as quickly as possible. And GameStop just announced that tomorrow, our time right now, they will be having a, a restock in store, which nobody expected a restock in store and online. So, uh, how do you feel going into war, my friend? Listen, at the end of the day, I I know I'm going to get it. Yeah, I just find it funny that like the the, the, cinema, the, 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 the cinematics is kind of like yeah. everyone's taking this way too seriously. I just know I'm going to get it, regardless of how it is, how it comes to me. I know I'm going to get it, but I do want to be part of the day one committee, the execution, the pageantry of trying to get something. Yeah, it's fun. I find it fun. I mean, it was annoying when they right. bullshitted last week, but I find it it was entertaining. Yeah. It was fun. And uh, tomorrow, I wish you the best of luck. I'll be there. So, um, <laughs> can you imagine the this? Hunger Games? It's exactly. funny. Exactly. It's like, Rah! Oh, for the PS5. Yeah, seriously. Which, but, which, by the way, a lot of people are getting mad at GameStop right now because GameStop jotted down a list of people that didn't get a pre order that, but. To notify them about restocks, and the main the main dude at GameStop told all the employees to rip them up. Why? Because that wasn't fair. Oh, okay. I think PlayStation said everyone gets a clean shot. I don't want no favorites. Don't give me a list of people that you notify. None of that shit. But, but at our local GameStop, I made a call because I wanted to make sure. Today? Something. Yeah, yeah, I, did. Uh, I made a call. Uh, because what what, what did they say? I wanted to make sure because I said, listen, are you guys opening at 12? Because if you open at 12, I want to be sure that I get there at a certain time so that, you know, by the time I, I'm online or getting there, it's not like you know, we opened up at 10 for something. It's like, no, well, you know, we were going to open at 12, but just make sure that you're online because I know that a lot of people are going to be out there. Oh, was it? Uh, was it uh, uh, which yeah, 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 was yeah, yeah, yeah. We already know who he was. It was Rick Flair. Uh, yeah, exactly. Robe. Fabulous. By the way, I cannot imagine... You can't even get over that comment uh, that please. he made. We, it, it, it's it's one so, of those... so what so what, what was the warning here? Like, yeah, what, what did they I, give? Just me? Make sure you're online because I I can imagine that there's going to be a lot of people. I said, yeah, I just want to make sure that you're opening at twelve because I don't want to get there at a certain time and your doors were already open and it's already pre sold out. Bro, let me ask you a question. What's the earliest you would go? And and and, and I'm, mm. I'm asking this question for a reason because I'm in the area at that time and I'm willing to even. I know this sounds OD, and believe me, this doesn't have to go there. But, but I, but you know that, me with the Nintendo it's just, Switch. It, to me, it's, it's just not that serious. To me, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm honestly. I'm, I'm looking at maybe like ten, ten thirty, maybe, maybe. Okay, can I give you my advice? What? This is what I think you should do. I think you should go earlier to check it out, because I don't want you to wake up and then find out that you go and you're like, you know what, fuck it. What I, I, what Cause I'll, because I'll, I'll even what I'll do is the head count. Out. What I'll do is the head count. We're we're we're, we're, we're already going to be on a tandem to wear it. I'm gonna give you my credit card information for for the, yeah. for, for the game stuff. And even if I'm done with the shit, my meeting early, and you're not there yet, I'll wait online for you. No, but I'm saying 
we can do the the credit card thing online, so we both share it to where boom, boom, boom. If it happens, yeah. it happens, right? Oh, it is. So I'm waiting for it. So which... we'll both go on and we'll do this. But my whole thing is that honestly, if I don't even, even if I don't get it tomorrow, it's just a restock will happen again. Funny, story. but it's fun. It's fun. I'm actually it's, it's fine. It's, it, the, the hunt of the. Tri- I haven't done this since. Like midnight releases, so yeah, which, it's because I don't do that shit anymore. I don't give a fuck about that. that which, shit. Um, what was the last time you did a midnight release? Hmm. Not last time I did a midnight release was for God of War, right? For PS4, Wait, but but GameStop actually recently changed it to ten o'clock releases, right? Because they realized twelve o'clock midnight is um honestly stupid, right? And no one's fucking doing that anymore. What was it that I did? It for? I remember that I was at work and I got out early. And you saw a line. On break, and there was a line. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it was for Madden or something. How recent was that, though? You remember? Uh, but no, I was. At, it was probably a couple of years ago. And I, I, matter of fact, I was on break, and I was like, "Oh shit, you guys are opening up." It was like, "Yeah," uh, but I was like, "Oh, I thought it was a midnight release." It's like, "No, no, no, we had to open up a little bit early." So I was like, "Oh, okay." I think it was probably for like a Madden or some shit. You know how they always. Well, you like know that. my story with the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. That embarrassing story, which I hate to tell, but. Uh, because I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> I'm at work, and I find out the Nintendo Switch has a few extras on release day, um, like four or five extras. So I dart over to GameStop because I don't have it pre-ordered. And I find out that I'm the, get this, I'm the fourth person in line, and it was five extras. So basically, I was there at 6 o'clock, and it was midnight release. And if I couldn't, if I left the line, I was screwed. Right. So I was, I was there for six hours. Right. My friend bought me Taco Bell. <laughs> I went, pro, I went, bro. My friend, I couldn't. Do my friend, that. my friend held me a spot. I, I, I went to Fye and bought a blanket. I could not do that because I was so determined to get this console. Was but it I, worth it? Yes, the Switch is awesome. <laughs> I love the Switch. Which, by the way, um, Super Mario 3D All Stars is out, ladies and gentlemen. And, Have you been playing uh, that? And um, Super Mario 64 is fucking complicated. Yeah, I just don't get it. Maybe because like it's old. I, I don't. I, mean, I don't know. Like, does it look old? No, they updated the graphics. Oh, it's okay. HD, but. Yeah. Just the gameplay and stuff is just hard for me to fa- – because I'm so used to, like, this new Mario shit. It's a little tricky, but I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. But tomorrow is the war, so we'll give you an update if Red gets one. Yeah. Which, by the way, Red – We're going to go into the trenches, which, ladies by the way, and gentlemen. Red, I hope you realize that um, by tomorrow, you mean I'm, – I'm, I'm assuming they mean midnight for online. Uh, tonight. Tonight. Because Amazon said tomorrow that day, and they came out at midnight. That's what I got. Well, I'll, I'll check. I'll check what it is. So I'll, I'll check what it is. I'm assuming midnight. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll check, check tonight. for you because I know this guy who goes on YouTube for alerts, and he <laughs> helped me with the Amazon. No, because he helped me with my Amazon one. Like he alerted me when Amazon came out. I got a story to tell you when the mic is off. I, I, I and I hate doing that because I we we expose go, all here. We expose everybody, but you know, and I always say this: this show's an open book. But for this one, it's not my story to tell. Oh, it's someone else's story. It's somebody else's story that's in my family, which it's a horrendous story. Right. And it's crazy. But let's just say that someone was messaging me and my family that they were uh, uh, not only they only got the not only did they get the pre order for the PS five, but they also got the pre order for the Xbox. Yeah. And something t- tragic happened to them, so they may or may not be able to get it. Oh no! Yeah, I, I'll tell you the story, everybody. Well, if, but uh, to me, it's like good for you for being braggadocious, you dick. Well, I I I don't want to assume the story ends with their pre-orders being canceled, but if their pre-orders are still on, can you um uh, swoop in and yeah, take that I'm pre-order? Not, yeah, we're or is not that, that it's that tragic. Yeah, we're not that close, so I don't, yeah. I don't think it can happen. But um, uh, other than let's that, let's the mics. I, I I also want to share the 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 aftermath of Super Producer Sally's birthday. Yeah, man. Sally's birthday. Officially we, a teenager. Yes, yes, officially a teenager. I have a teenager now. I for anybody who, who listens to the show, I only have one child. Uh, I, I don't. No, I'm not his son. No, uh, it, people have asked me that. I've been asked <laughs> I've, that. Uh, if you're my dad. I'm like, no. no. I play one on TV though, but no, I uh, I have I have gotten that. It's like no, yes, I'm. I, I was raised in the projects, and I was able to come out with only one kid, well, and I got you, him. In you, my, you always my told my me you always wanted one. Listen, I was a, I was an only child with my mother, so it doesn't matter. We right. we, we we've done well for ourselves. Yeah, but uh. She had a she had a a fun time. She had a great day and awesome. Uh, shout out to everybody who who gave her love and showed us love on on social media and stuff. You guys are, were were really um, 
were really loving and, and caring about her. You had a great. You guys post. do it every year, man. You had a great post. Yeah, I, I, I did. I get, I get sentimental. I get weepy. I look for. I, it's, it's funny because I know you never do that. So when I know when Sally's birthday comes around, I'm looking for the sentimental post of the, of the year. Of How the was year. it this year? It was good. I was very happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm very proud of you for that one. I, I remember reading that. And I was like, this man. I was to put words when it comes to the birthday girl. Listen, and you know it's funny because I, I put it out there to the world, and then she sees it because we follow each other on social yep. media, and I don't get any response from. Wow. <laughs> Well, I guess it's cringe. It's not, man. Yeah. I don't even ask. I don't even ask anymore. I don't even go, did you see what I read for you? Uh, you just assume even... she didn't. She know, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's just like, um, I, I would have thought that she's like, thank you, daddy. I love you. I don't, no, 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 no. no. Mm. <laughs> um, I know we... my child. You know why? Because she's me. So yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. it is. Listen, yeah, I, I read it. If move on. My mother does that on, on her social media for my birthday, and I bust her balls, and I'm like, are you serious? Do I need to put another fucking pair of panties on you just because to make you feel more <laughs> womanly for what you did? What right. You but, you know, we, we're not like that. So. No, I get that. It so. sucks because a lot of people love to celebrate birthdays. and I'm kind of over it. We're not point. like that. We're really not. I used to be. Not anymore. I, I, I'm kind of over it. Makes it, it makes us feel like douchebags that we don't do what other people no. do. But it's, no. Nah, no. No, there's people that go balls out. Oh, I know someone yeah. um, that it's, her birthday was, I think, yesterday or today, and she bought a whole ass projector movie theater for her house. Yeah, yeah. And like, and she like it was a whole bonanza shit. Like, you know what I'm doing for my birthday? I'm eating pork grinds and watching wrestling. Exactly. And that's what I do. I, I find I, enjoyment in that. The like, only thing I do is like, you know, just I do what I do every time. I look for I look forward to the one thing just on my birthday out. every year. Yeah. I get to choose where we take out to eat. Ah, and that's uh, that's all I that's all I wish. For. <laughs> that's what you do in the household. That's, yeah, that's all I get. Which, by the way, speaking of um things to remember, before we do the the quick plug and uh, move on to the next segment, I do want to give a quick shout out to our one year anniversary of Balls Out for Harambe. Balls Out for Harambe, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you look <laughs> look for us on the Turnbuckle Tabloid group page. We shared it out. <laughs> Yo, and that dude, I was up. I was a big boy back then. Holy I, crap! See how big back you were. Uh, it was bad. I, Jeez. But, guys, the one-year anniversary of Balls Out for Harambe. Was if you don't year. know what it is, go on the Facebook group page, and you will see what we're talking about. And how long ago was that? Um, long enough for Ooh. for Red to pull Celia aside and say, don't look that way. <laughs> I know you still would say that now, but, like, maybe you were more inclined nah, to nah, live no, years no, ago. No, no, These days I'd be like, mm, it's your choice now. Yeah, <laughs> now you can. I guess you can. but Because this is like an anatomy yeah. set, like a lesson. It'd be like, yeah, this is like, um... This is what a testicle looks like. Someone commented and said, um, it's been years ago, but I still have the jarring question in my mind. How did that ball fit through those jeans? <laughs> <laughs> How did it squeeze through the goalie? How did it squeeze through the goalie? I'm like, I don't know no idea. Right. That shit must have hurt. Like, went through the five hole, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> went through the five hole. Goal. But like, other than that, welcome everybody to another episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid. I'm your host, Mr. Ear to the Mat, the King of Toast Style, and as always, the Cheap Thrill. Jada Red Santa. And I am the Mook with the mic. And I am the Funko Hub, Matt Olski. I, yo, I, I, I was waiting for you to start doing that, please, because we need to start promoting that. And yes, I officially went to 800 Yeah, yesterday. I saw that. Congratulations. So, thank you. Well, remember, I, have, I have the button here. Good. Thank you. The road to 1,000 continues, ladies and gentlemen. So if you guys are just new to the show, what is the, the Funko Hub? What is uh, it? The Funko Hub is a it's a new uh, well it's been a month old, but it's a it's a page on Instagram uh, exclusive right now on Instagram that um, is made to promote Instagram live sales for the Funko community uh, raffles promote pages. Which shout out to my boy the bearded Funko. It's his birthday today. Um, who just blessed me out of nowhere? He messaged me last night. Uh, who got me a Chef Goofy and a Sorcerer Mickey. So thank you for that, brother. Um, but basically, it's a page just to promote each other's um, raffles and sales, connect with the community in a positive way. And a big announcement's coming at 1,000 followers. It's a production that I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to announce. So let's get more followers. So 200 more, which... If you're a Funko Pop person and you listen to the show... This pull is- up. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. It's awesome, man. I cannot believe the the amount of love I'm getting from this. Someone just messaged me today and wanted to do a quick live session, and I said I'm, I can't because I'm doing my podcast. And he said, he said, yo, I just want to let you know I'm a big fan of your work, and the fact that you followed me means a lot to me. I'm like, dude, it ain't like that. You know what makes you an even bigger fan? Listen to the show and download it here. Yeah, yeah, listen, <laughs> exactly. So you know the amount of outpour of like the the, the 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 support, people are going out of their way to look for pops for me. I appreciate you guys. So the Funko Hub on Instagram, the Funko Hub, not Funko Hub, T H E. 
Funko Hub. Make sure you check us out on all social media. I'll check us out on a like group page on Facebook. And those numbers are growing as well. But I got to tell you guys, the thing about us when we do our shows is that people will sit there and we do our social medias and it really, and it's, it's, it's a hard way to say, but we don't suck dick for you guys. Like we don't, we never have, we don't pay for followers. No, we don't do it. no. you like us. You like us. You don't, you don't. The only thing we said that we're there. We're available. Uh, the only thing that we do ask is like for our listeners and people who do follow us, share to other people and say, yo, these guys, this, this is a show that you will want to be a part of. And, and this is, so make sure you check us out on those outlets check us out on the like group page on facebook check us out on instagram at the turnbuckle tabloid podcast as well as on twitter at turnbuckle tab make sure you check us out on the youtube and anchor page at turnbuckle tabloid the youtube page is up and running more and more is coming more content for you guys on youtube listen to be honest with you i only put shit up there because i am like we can say we have just to say we have it there (laughs) just to say we have it i really don't give a fuck because i know a lot of stuff that we do on this show is not gonna be fucking flown promoted on youtube and uh because it's gonna be like oh here comes a strike flag 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 you did a parody of a a licensed song whatever the case may be it's like whatever get flagged whatever but any case just it's there it's just to show it off or whatever case may be but also make sure you check us out there check us out on on um Oh my God! I, I, on TikTok, I, I just put up a, a piece there as well. Oh, with that beautiful cutting a promo we have this week. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw what you posted. Oh, and, there was uh, a bunch going on there. So, oh God, you guys, I'm being nice now. Get ready for the other segments on the oh, show. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic! And also, as always, check us out on all the podcasting outlets: Google Play, uh, iTunes, wherever you get podcasts, we're there. It is no, we're now on Amazon Music. So. Wherever you can listen to us, we are available. So just and I'm 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 sitting here monitoring. I'm telling Olski about uh, what numbers we're getting. It's it, it's a it, we're we're in Russia now. Yeah yeah, we're going everywhere, man. So uh, guys, we're doing the world tour. And if you can't get us there, make sure you check us out on RageWorks.net. RageWorks.net is where you get all the up and coming uh, previews, reviews, articles that's going on. Everything that's all connected with the the community, which is just. Comic books, videos, TV shows, movies It's all there So if you guys want to, to read previews, reviews And our thoughts about what's going on in the world It's at RageWorks.net And always. And if you can't get the podcast on a, I wouldn't know why you can't get it anywhere else Get it at RageWorksNetwork.com RageWorksNetwork.com Is available for you guys You guys are there All you gotta do is just go on RageWorksNetwork.com And just click and you'll see the podcast it's Call me when it's over Black is new black Treks uh, on on untold treks, uh, uh, toys and techs. We're all there, so why go anywhere else when you could get it right there? It's 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 us, the family at RageWorks, guys. So um, before before we let you go to go into the rest of the the, the show, we we, have a, we actually have a funeral service this week, so yeah, yeah, we have a lot to go on. But I do have I I, I would I would be a miss if I didn't mention this. And I know this is a wrestling show, and Oski and I, we do curtail to talk about the current events. And yeah. I have to say, this past week, with what's going on politically when it comes to upcoming elections, when it comes to the social uh, landscape of what's going on, what happened in Louisville, what's going on, and it's, it's still to this day we go. We can't, we can't sit there and think like, well, you know, it's a wrestling show, so... Uh, all we gotta do is talk wrestling, and but that's we not give you what we two do. and a half hours of wrestling. We give you, uh, you exactly. Know, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, we are still fucking living in this world, and we're connected with this. And yep. I cannot sit here, and especially for our people who listen to us overseas yep. and who are uh, in touch with what's going who on. Laugh at our country because we're a shit show right now. Exactly, <laughs> we're like, a shit show right now. I cannot believe that you still deal with that president. Did you see? Did, did you see? Did you see the British newspaper post a cartoon of basically shitting on us right now that we're uh, fighting ourselves? Exactly. They're right. They're it's right. So horrible. Yeah, it's, it's but, we're, we're a laughing stock, unfortunately. <laughs> but we we do have to say here that with the past uh, week, with the past um, um, basically the judgments or the the the. The charges that were dropped in the Breonna Taylor case in Louis uh, in um, Louisville, Kentucky. Which, if you guys don't know, Google it. You you know what the it's hell is going guys. on. It's everywhere, guys. It's 
it's it's fucking atrocious yeah. what's going on yeah. here. And if you guys don't really, uh, uh, if you're new to the show, I am a Puerto Rican man, and Oski's a young, uh, icy white person. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, I'm a Caucasian. He's he's, uh, he's, he's milky. He's milky. Not Caucasian. Milky is whole milk. But. but but not only that, it's it's one of those things that we're on a show to where. We want to let the the audience know that we're with you with your gripes. We get it. We're with you why you're angry. We're with you why things that people on the outer stretch don't believe is right and is and we don't understand why it's being justified for for these causes. Yeah. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of, of just arguing or debating or or discussing why it's deplorable where we live in a world to be a minority in which we're not we're all fucking human at the end they were all human and uh, it's sad that we're still in 2020 and that's not being represented and people come to me on the track and tell me why you know someone came to me on the track today because i I went i went straight to the track when i got home from uh, Ocean City, and someone I overheard someone say that they're happy about the Breonna Taylor judgment because they found like it was bullshit, and they were like, "Well, but the the boyfriend was a criminal." So I'm like, "Yo, and they don't even know they the ex boyfriend no was the criminal." Yeah, they don't know what they're talking. The ex boyfriend wasn't even there, and, the and it upsets that, me. Carmelo Anthony said it today. He goes, "Yo, today was a big setback." Well, the day of the judgment. Here's here's my thing. Here's my here's my issue. So and 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 I, I've gotten to a, a, a and, and like I said I'm not having these debates anymore on my personal yeah, page. Yeah, Facebook. I think you're. I have not seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not doing it on my personal page anymore. I'll, I'll fuck with motherfuckers in the in the like the media pages like Fox News, Daily News, yep, yep. Uh, CNN. I'll fuck with people there, but on my personal page, I'm not having these all these debates or arguments or, or difference of opinion anymore because once you feel that what is happening with our people is justified. Especially if you're of my color, of my race, of my minority, and you feel it's justified, yep. Then you know what? I can't give you the two hundred, the 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 the, the, the two dollars and fifty cent to dry your brainwashed head. I can't do it anymore. All right? No, I can't. It's hard. It's, it's it's hard to after how tired it is. And so I'm so tiring. sick of this. Our country has made it has made it clear that it's okay to break into somebody's house. In which our stance is, uh, if someone comes into your home, you're going to protect your home. Yep. That's common sense. And with this case was, it was a no-knock warrant. So if somebody's coming into your house and... I'm getting the nearest weapon near me. And you're trying to protect yourself. Hell yeah. That's my family in there. And this person didn't know what was going on. What and these expect? shots were fired. How was it? Thirty six shots. Yeah, it was around there. And what was what was the initial shot? There was only one. Thirty six. It takes that. Long, it takes that many to to. Which, by the way, aren't police? Aren't they taught to like to do everything but shoot first? Um, like I don't know, like knock them down. Like you know, there's ways around this. I just found it amazing that uh, to me, thirty six shots also says maybe somebody reloaded. I don't know, but yeah, it's it. It sounds but like the other it, thing is uh, how many officers were there in that scene? You know, it, it was like it was um, but it was four officers. Oh, four officers on us. On thirty six. That means it basically had to be around like like, like 12, 12 each. Like what the 10 to twelve? Uh, fuck. No, no, so, excuse me, eight. Eight each, whatever the fuck you want to go. Boom, 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 and uh, one nah. officer was charged with basically reckless endangerment, whatever that um that um wanton fucking wanton, endangerment, yeah. and, and, and and it's considered because he shot into another apartment, but there was a woman sleeping in her bed who was killed. But the crazy thing is that which I've never heard ever. I've never heard of this. That before these, before anyone was charged or given any kind of sentencing or whatever, was that the civil case was already completed. Where I think the family got twelve million dollars. Yeah. For settlement, right? That, 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 that that's unprecedented. I've never heard of this. No, it's, it's suspect it's, it's all hush around. money. Yeah, it's hush money. And I'm sorry, 
whoever listens to this and whoever um I know a, I know a lot of people in the country who listen to the show and who who agree or, or may agree or disagree with what I'm saying, but I'm going to be honest, I would have never taken that money. I would have never went to that money. Nope. And and and, and got and and, ta- and, and 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 even pillaged for it because well, I'd be like, you know, fuck this. Well, you said I want the judgment first. Well, and then we'll get the money. Well, you, you you told me years ago when it comes to like that kind of hush money situation, you're like, you know, you could say everything all you want, but once you take that money, you're kind of thrown in the corner where it's like you can't really do anything now because you, yeah. you took that money. Exactly. Like you basically shook the hand with the devil. So yeah. now you can't, you can't do what, just, you, what you can do. And it's, it's exhausting that this is what it's now come to because – Oh, it's I, a shit show. I, I, just, I, I, I just read articles where the family's outraged. It was like, but you, you took guys – Took the money. What you do that? You said, like you said, it's hard to. I would have said, "Fuck your money." Yep. Fuck what y'all about. Get how, me how much was it? Eleven million. It like tw- eleven, twelve million. It's like that's not no. Fuck that. It's not they worth gotta go. She's probably you know. The 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 boyfriend that that they were looking for was an ex. He's he already was in jail. already somebody done. Yeah. He was already in jail. The boyfriend that was in the house was pretty, and she had a life. That was progressing from whole, you know what it EMT is. EMT worker. There's times that you and I have talked, and I've told you that I've done shit in my life that I'm not proud of, and yeah. you even told me it was like I don't want to even hear it because it'll fuck me. It, it, it taints your thoughts of me and shit. Sometimes, because sometimes you give me the one like no, 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 no. It's yeah, like it's like, but even so, it's like, can you imagine? God forbid that I get stopped for something and I'm I'm innocent for everything, and something happens to me. And the first thing they'll 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 talk about is my criminal past or people that I've associated in my history, and that will be the way that they blanket me as a person. Rather than sounds like a racist reach. It, uh, th- you know, and I like that, and I like the way you meant the racist reach because they're you know they're you know I think that's what that is because they have to go they have to swoop down to that level to find something to get you in trouble. But they do it all the time because whenever you look in the media and Uncle Fred will probably even co-sign on this where it's whenever it's somebody who was killed the first thing that they'll look for is whether or not he had gang ties or whether or not he had a criminal past. They will never acknowledge the fact that he was changing his life or anything right. like that. And I try to explain that to somebody on on, on one of cuz the guy that I usually go back and forth with, he didn't want to get at me. On my personal page, no, nah, because I said I'm not fucking with you. He had right. to find me on one of the news outlets, uh, and I'm like, dog, you know what? You 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 win, because I can't do this co- this competition right, with you, right? Because you he find, went to the he went to the news pages, but you this but you'll find a way to justify why everything is right. But at the end of the day, it's not right. No, and and I, and I will call a spade a spade. Honestly, if somebody's fucked up and they do bullshit, you know what? Hey, you shouldn't have been doing it. But you know what? Nah. This fucking, this fucking government, this, 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 the way this authority is and the way that we live, the shit was open up. As soon as this, 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 this Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin shit happened, it was just a slow creaking turn of how the door was going to open. Yep. And once this fucking orange piece of shit got into office, it's been a listen, shit show. It's always been about, well, you know, he, 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 uh, Allowed this to happen because uh, uh, he he wanted these people to come out, and I was like, no, 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 this was always to be like this. It was always there. He just made it popular. Yep. He made it. He made it media, okay. T- Facebook made it famous. Yeah. Social media made it famous, and he made it famous. Yep. So, so. By the way, everyone keeps talking about World War Three. I hope everyone knows we're basically having a war in ourselves. It's a civil war. Yeah. It's our, our own civil yeah. war. And like you said, like you mentioned earlier, our. Our country is a joke. Oh, it's a laughing stock. I speak. To, I spoke to my friend in Canada, and he goes, "Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, the people around my area, he lives in Quebec. He goes, "Yo, we laugh at y'all. No offense. He goes, "You guys look like clowns." And I'm like, "I agree with you, fam. We do. Imagine, think, imagine looking from the outside." And as always, as I said, when we speak about something like this, and we always talk about this before we sign off, I always said, "I will not be surprised if this fuckface." Is voted back into office. I again. wouldn't be shocked either, and I'd be because a sh- you know what? And, yeah, I I went and I did the research, and I was going, and I said, let me find out what how we scale in education here. Yeah, they have us from all that. And the average was we're sixth in the world of education, and I said that's bullshit. We have to be like fifty six. Yeah, we're worse than that because we're idiots. Yeah, we're bad. If we continue to tolerate the bullshit yep. 
and if we roll them back in, we should be 80th or 100th because exactly. that's the that's the ultimate test that they're going to fail. All right. You know, that's the important thing. Vote, I mean, you know, and get this douche out of here. So, guys, when we come back, we have much more in the store. We have cutting a promo. Cutting a promo this week is going to be very interesting. Everybody was out there running out the gate to talk about this because what happened this week on Raw. But, Oski, we'll let everybody know what we're going to talk about. Hold on a second. I need to get my uh, my suit on. I need no, to I'm the- prepared to go on cutting a promo this week because yeah. we, we have shit to go with. Yeah, cutting a promo. I got my suit on. I got to get everything. We got um the, 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 the retribution has been officially, I uh, guess, um, revealed. And uh, we have an unfortunate funeral service for these guys you know, at cutting a promo. Wrestling Rundown is the usual news. Supposedly, um, more AEW drama with Chris Jericho, which, again, the usual. COVID has been... COVID's been ramping I, I, through I, I, AEW I, I, I doors. Thought, I thought, I thought um, AEW didn't have a sloppy... Sloppy, shop, slop shop. shop. Yeah, right. Well, but it actually seems like both of them, because NXT got a big round of COVID yeah. as well. So you can't, you can't duck it. Both of them got COVID. We'll talk about that. You hear that, you piece of shit in office? It's, it's happening everywhere. It, which, by the way, the amount of people in Maryland that said that COVID's fake. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, right, exactly. Um, and uh, after Wrestling Rundown, I think we have a round of square circle on Get Vocal. And uh, um, that's the thing that's it this week, right? Yeah, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, NXT... Um, AEW's their 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 um their shows this week. Which, by the and, way, really weird I, week for AEW because they had two nights in a row they're on TNT. They had and, late night Dynamite and they had real Dynamite next day. And also, I have to tell you guys, I'm on a high horse about two promotions right now that should be recognized right now on a comeback. That I think I know you're talking at. about. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return. I'll check you guys in a second. Oski, uh, how what was Ocean, how was Ocean City? Beautiful. All right, see you guys in a sec. This is Vincent Kennedy McMahon. A couple of weeks, you have heard disparaging news about and against my professional wrestlers. It's as though they were that was circulating that I initiated an agenda in which my rest to go on social media. Out. Now, let's be honest. The stories were true. I do not want any of my wrestlers to be a part of social media. I made a change. And I have a proclamation to fight and basically make us come together, not only as a company, but as a promotion and as a family. So I, McMahon, bring to you Tice WWE. That's Rough Sports presents WWE social media. It's a Vincent Kennedy McMahon creation. I'm going to take all the other social medias and crush them. Inject the poison and get them out of our social climate. For instance, no more YouTube with Titan Sports presents WWE social media. We'll now have Mac YouTube. It is not YouTube, it's Mac YouTube. So all our WWE wrestlers, our talent, can go out there and film all the video content they want on Mac YouTube. But wait, there's more. You know that outlet where all those simple-minded, feeble-minded, little, piss-poor video gamers play their Pac-Man and their Mario Brothers and Asteroid video games. Well, you know what? Now we have Mac Twitch. Now our wrestlers can really get out there and get their gaming on on games like Mr. Do or Dig Dug and Burger Time with Mac Twitch. It's a site to play video games on we here at titan sports wwe social media we also have an outlet for where our performers our entertainers can share their thoughts opinions and other things on social media we have mac bookface and mac twatter those are both their outlets where you can use to Think about today's political climate, our current media, our, our day's events, and 
what you think about other wrestling promotions that's not tied to WWE. Our wrestlers can go on Mac Bookface and Mac Twatter. Although our wrestlers are independent contractors, I still own them. But to make them feel more free and feel as though that they don't have to go anywhere else, you can go to Titan Sports Presents WWE social media or else you're fired. Coming soon will be McCameo so you can say happy birthday and happy anniversary and sorry for your loss on McCameo under the WWE banner. And I'm bringing back Tout, damn it. I'm bringing back Tout. This paid advertisement was brought to you by Turnbuckle Tabloid. Give me a fucking mic. Turnbuckle Tabloid cutting a promo. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Let me, let me get in position for this because I, I got to make sure that uh, I got to be in um, cosplay mode for this. Hold on. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, do the lead in, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like the way that looks on you, man. I know. I fuck with it. Uh, you look like um, um, Flapjack. Which, wow. Um, <laughs> I would hate to be to be that per human being. Uh -huh. um, so, guys, uh, this week... Um, now you know why you wanted to be on the camera. <laughs> it's only fitting. Exactly. Uh, so, guys, you know, this past week on Monday Night Raw, we were, um, we were accustomed. Right. We were accustomed to Monday Night Raw with a with a with a terrible episode. Later, my man. Thank you, yes, sir. Um, Monday Night Raw had the the reveal. Put your mask on. I. <laughs> I hear that way too often lately. Alright. Later, brother. Um <laughs> So Got got you. So, um which oh jeez, this is this mess I can't see anything out of it. <laughs> this shit is this ridiculous. Is this shit is terrible and it hurts. Um it's it's like it's, it's, it's like a ball gag on the back of it. It's for bananas. Um, so this week on Monday Night Raw, we were um, we were entertained to the debut and reveal of Retribution, and wow! In the words of um, the Angry Joe Show, <laughs> right? If anyone knows anyone knows Angry Joe Show, I guess uh, you you know you know where I'm getting here. You done fucked it up. You done fucked it up. <laughs> and and. and and I'll put the mask back on because, you know, fuck it. You gotta live the gimmick, I gotta bro. live the gimmick. You gotta live the gimmick. I gotta live the gimmick. Um, I don't think anyone was expecting what we saw this week on Monday Night Raw, right? Did you watch it? Did you take it? Look yes, I did. I actually, um, I, it was almost, I, since I worked uh, that night, I, don't, I, I usually don't watch it live. So I watched it. I watched, I, this is what I did. You get the highlights on YouTube and shit like that, but then I was like, no, I, 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 this, I, I have to punish myself and watch the whole thing. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, you let's know, give a just give a, give a rundown of what your thoughts are of this. So, um, this week we were, um, like I said, they debuted, they were revealed, and um, holy shit, did WWE <laughs> fuck this up? Um. Let's let's let's. I start. gotta laugh. I have to laugh at this. I have to. I have to because I'm hoping this is a dream that I'm gonna wake up from, and uh, maybe I'm being pinched. Maybe, you know, maybe there's something that I don't know about. Uh, but they come out and let's just go over in in chronological order. We get um all members of Retribution with new masks. Um, Dominic Dijakovic looking like Bane. Um, Shane Thorne looking like 
Freddy Krueger. I want to. I want to get. I want to get in. Um, in whole in, in character. In character mode. Uh, Mia Yim look, looks like she has a ball gag in her mouth, and she's about to do some sex shit with Keith Lee. <laughs> Mercedes Martinez looks like Mercedes Martinez, because I think I've seen her wear a mask before, so it's like whatever. And Dio Madden looking like. One of those male escorts who strip for bachelorette parties. <laughs> um, you know, and unfortunately, we found out what their gimmick is, what their names are. We'll go about the names in a minute because that's the ultimate reveal. But uh, basically, their gimmick is they they signed a deal to WWE – while which is what the killing fuck is WWE and shitting on WWE, which doesn't make any sense. That's like me shitting on my company and my job, and then working there anyway. But still, why would you sign somebody that's tearing up your fucking company? They never explained that. And Jerry the King Lawler even went on the commentary team and said, "Why do they have a contract? It doesn't make any fucking sense." So they announced that after weeks of wrecking, um. The WWE Performance Center and um, whatever, all WWE in general, they've signed a contract to WWE, which makes no fucking sense. And the names of these of of the members so far announced: Dominic Dijakovic has been changed to T Bar. Shane Thorne is now <laughs> Slapjack, <laughs> and Dio Madden is Mace. I have no... Uh, they're dead. They're done. They have officially been dead in the water. Red, what were your instant thoughts when you, ha- when you heard the, 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 the reveal, the names, the costumes? Because in my opinion, this might be the biggest flop WWE has ever done. Hey, Kyle. How you doing, Kyle? What's up, Kyle? And I truly believe that Retribution won't last a month. I, I, they're so dead in the water. I think they don't have a chance of survival. I think their ex, uh, their life expectancy rate is going to be a month. I think they're done. Um, I think they're going to lose a Survivor Series and they're going to go back into their normal gimmicks. I'm praying to God they they do because T Bar, Mace, and Slapjack shows me one thing: Vince McMahon will do whatever the fuck he wants. To make himself laugh. Red, what are your thoughts? Your initial thoughts of this. Because I called you with that initial news of the names. But what, what was your experience watching the reveal of these fucking goofs? It, it, it's just like, what the fuck we're doing here? This is, this a joke? Well, we're not that joke. bad. No, I mean, I think we meant to be a joke. But honestly, I, I really think that Vince is is a very petty and vindictive individual when it comes to NXT. Why, why would you do this? Look, I get it. I, I, I kind of was on the, the, on, the, on the board where you have that invasion angle when it comes to individuals. Like Nexus. Like, I hate the system. I hate the main roster. Um... I said from the beginning, their their gimmick should have been like Triple H pulled me aside and also all aside and said we're getting called up and we refused. Right? Conti- Go ahead, bro. My bad. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> no, I was saying like the story of Retribution should have been all of the, them are from NXT. It should have been Triple H pulling them to the side saying, listen, you're going to the main roster. And they and the story could have been them refusing that they know how the system works up here. They know you could get you get destroyed. Like they could have really played this off well. Right? What were you saying before? No, I, 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 I just give me a second because I'm putting my mask on because I'm, I'm you can you can actually speak better than I can with yes you, right? yes I can. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm appalled. <laughs> By the fact that they're... This is worse than Vince's million dollar fucking caller idea. I, I, I honestly don't understand <laughs> why they think that this is going to be... This is going to go over. I don't get it. Um, Like I mentioned, 
I get the invasion angle. I get the 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 idea of individuals who aren't getting the uh, um the 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 uh, acknowledgement of their talent, but is this how you fucking display no. them? They ruined five uh-huh. of the they ruined five of the most hopeful talent in NXT with the matter of names and a gimmick. And and we thought Keith Lee was dead. These guys are officially dead. And not in a good way. Hold on, I got a scratch in my eye. <laughs> you know, these masks are so Listen, you you think you got it bad shit. Nah, this man I I, I fuck with this. This is uh this is actually pretty pretty dope. Uh, I actually <laughs> like I actually like this mask. It's actually pretty cool. Oh, yeah. But um you know Dominic Dijakovic was one of my favorite guys in NXT. So to see him get ruined, it, it kind of breaks my heart. You you had an opportunity to bring these 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 NXT um, guys up, and it was an absolute failure. Retribution is dead in the water. It's done. I don't care what nobody tells me. They had an opportunity to make a gem storyline. We've seen what Nexus has done. Nexus, before John Cena buried them, which, by the way, I want to point that out. John Cena has apologized for ruining Nexus. Well, get off his dick. He admitted it. He goes, yeah, I told him, I told him to stop the push, but he apologized for it. You know who ruined the push of Retribution? Retribution? Retribution. <laughs> well, and Vince. And Bruce Pritchard, because... Red, you can't tell me this wasn't a decision Vince and Bruce Pitcher made on a drunk game night. Oh uh, well, first of all, they don't drink apparently. Bullshit. But, but the other That's thing bullshit. is this: you, you already know that this is a slap in the face of what our social culture is going on right now. They wear the mask because it's because of the whole fucking COVID shit. Yep. So we already know that this well, is it's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's a f you. It's an escape. For... Do I sound like an echo when I'm doing this? Or am I no, good? you're good. Okay. Um, I, I was telling Red on the phone. Shout out to my boy Artex. He did our mask. My boy Artex. Check him out. I'll, I'll, I'll drop a link to him, how to get into his stuff anyway. Um, I The second I saw them with the masks, I automatically said to myself, this is Vince McMahon being allowed to talk shit about masks on national television. As the Republican he is. You fucking moron. Which, by the way, those masks look like straight-up sex toys. <laughs> um, Dominic has a COVID... Dominic, which, by the way, I will not call him T-Bar. I refuse. Dominic has a COVID... I would never disrespect that man by... I will never him. shit on his grave. Okay? <laughs> Dominic Dijakovic, okay... It looks like Bane. <laughs> they fucking scraped it. They made him... No, bo- he looks like Bane if Bane... Was on had, crack? If he had AIDS. Bane on AIDS, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, He looks like... Bro, they made him bald. They gave him fucking red contacts and red makeup. And a mask that reminds me of Bane on AIDS. The only person- Jeremy, how you doing, Jeremy? We're from, we're from Brooklyn, New York. We're from... Ridgewood, Queens, New York City. You know, he want to know because he, he's from Liverpool. What's up, Jeremy? Marco, what's up, man? Are the phone lines open? Yeah, the phone lines are open. 315 That's 315 So give us a call. Um, You know, the only person that I thought looked pretty cool was Dio Madden. Well, everybody gave him that Um, he looks like uh, the Predator kind of look. Which I'm okay with. The only person who looked okay. I'm not going to try to drink with this on like that. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, we always talk on this show about NXT do guys do, who need to stay in NXT. Uh, here's my answer. They all need to. Every single... <laughs> they need to, like, stop with this shit. I th- uh, like... I f- how bad do you feel for these, for, the, for, these, for these group of five this men and women? This is terrible. Like, oh my god. Oh. Uh. But what? I, but, but what, let me ask you this: what, what? What are your thoughts on? Do you think it's laziness? Do you think it's Vince getting a get a, a a rib? Do you think that? Do you think this is a legit thing? They think it's badass. What do you think was the memo here? I think this is it, it's a reach to try to get an audience 
and it was such a major fail. This is awful. This is so bad. This had to be Vince's idea. But I also, um, um, all right, I, 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 I'll gravitate to, to, to all the other stuff, right, but continue your thoughts. I just think it's a mess. Uh, from uh, from the names to the costumes, it's a mess. Uh, I think the names killed it for me. That was the cherry on top. Uh, at first, when I saw the masks, I was like, oh, this is bad, but this ain't awful yet. And the second I found out their names, it was awful. I feel, I, like, I, feel like I was in a bad dream. Okay, uh, let, let's do a rundown. Yeah, let's do it. Is Raw creatively bankrupt at this point right now? Yes, they're done. Their creative is bad. Why do I, I feel like Slipknot right now. Your eyes are <laughs> creeping me out. I don't know what the fuck ha- is going on. You're, you're, I, I, I don't know what the fuck. I feel like I'm in part of Slipknot. Yeah, right the here. eyes are like, you know, the, the eyes in that shit are weird. What the fuck? But, but I, I'm coming off clear, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so let's go through the rundown. Um, I, I think that the, I think Raw right now, and, and, and the whole show in general is creatively bankrupt. I, I think the only thing Raw is good for right now are two things, which I can't even say one of them because they fucked it up for me this week. Um, the Hurt Business is, like, I think the hottest thing in WWE right now, and I think that the whole Rollins and Rey Mysterio storyline has some growth there. Besides that, their women's division is god-awful. They're, like, Lana and Natalia are on every week. You're telling me some shit's bad, okay? They need Charlotte Flair desperately. Um... The tag team division is a fucking joke. They have no tag teams anymore. It's a fucking travesty. Uh, and you pull off creative shit like this, which I could bet my bottom dollar. There's a Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon idea. Uh, uh, and the, the creative is just really not there. I, I don't know if it's laziness. I don't know if it's like... It, it Maybe Vince in his mind's like, we're giving them Thunderdome so we don't give a shit anymore. Something is wrong under Monday Night Raw. Do you think maybe they're missing Paul Heyman a little bit? I think they're just missing what wrestling is supposed to be. Well, well you what, have, what's your vision of wrestling you have, nowadays? You have two of probably one of the hottest uh, angles in their show right now. You have the Hurt Business, which is great, which you basically buried them now because now they're face. What the fuck is that about? With this whole retribution shit. It's, a, it's sad. It's sad. It's a fucking depressing. I don't care what anyone tells me. You just made them face. It's it's stupid. Yeah. I love that we had these individuals who... They were like... Her business should not be face. They were like they were like the black um, for horsemen. It was awesome. Yep. And it still is, but... It's still cool, but what the fuck are you... Because, you know, God forbid you say black or whatever... But yeah, they were the black full horsemen. They were. They were. It was. It was a good look. And then you could have easily grabbed a couple of faces and made them face fucking retribution. Suck dick. Exactly. Suck dick. Anybody could have attacked it first. And then fucking excuses, raw excuses. And, and, and like you said, this is a big smack in the face to NXT. With you could have took lower leveled NXT stars, put them in this position. And then had a main event kind of person, like maybe a Samoa Joe. Kevin Owens. A Kevin Owens. uh, 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 um, Who else? um, uh, Maybe Seth Rollins. He could have converted his... Because he doesn't have anybody anymore. He could have had a group of disciples. Like the whole Smiley gimmick. You know, Smiley has like his fucking group of loot of fucking Smiley guys. Right, you could have made this guy like... uh, 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 Put a main event face on it, but what you did was you burned it to the ground. Put a a, a a group of individuals who had who has talent to exceed. You needed a Mercedes Martinez. You needed a Mia uh, Mia Yim in your women's division badly, desperately, and that's how you use them. You have a, 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 a Dominic Dajakovic who could easily be a, a superstar. And SmackDown, or maybe even Raw to change things up. You could have had that storyline going on with, with, with Keith Lee. And it was Shane Thorne and, and Theo Mad- and Theo Madden. You could have made them a tag team and had them fun. And made something. Because you're, you're killing the fucking tag team division Bro, anyway. Bro, I've never seen WWE have a worse tag and women's division in my life. In my life. 
Their tag division is fucking a mess. So much of a mess, might I add you, that they just randomly threw Dominic and Umberto Carrillo together because they're Mexican. Marco, what's up, boy? What up, Marco? I, I, I'm... Dude, you, 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 their, I'm... their tag division, their women's division is non-existent. And you had... Hold up. <laughs> I, I'll put this back on in a minute because I'm fucking about to go off. You had Mercedes Martinez and Mia Yim, who are p- quite possibly two of the best women's wrestlers on the planet right now, and you fucking pertain them to a bullshit gimmick like this. A gimmick, actually, that reminds me of a group of frat boys going to a party to get pussy with it, costumes. It, 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 it almost reminds me of, like, Scream 6, the movie. You mean scary movie? <laughs> Where they shit on horror movies? Yeah, exactly. It's a fucking rib. And I'm so... I literally, like... Uh, supposedly, the report backstage was that they were laughing. People were in the back were laughing at their gimmicks. Um, and supposedly, someone went up to fucking Dajakovic and said, I'm sorry for your loss. What are your thoughts on the backstage's reaction to it? But but they're right, though. It's sad, but... And they're it, brothers. Like, they're family, some but, of them. But they're right, though. Because you know what? The The... It's unfortunate that they have to be put in these predicaments. Yeah. It, it, it's sad. The main roster is a poison. But I, I, I really think genuinely that Vince looks at what Triple H has been doing in NXT and wants to fucking piss on him and say, yeah, you, you, you're not better than me. You're not. Do you think it's a competition at this point in Vince's eyes? I think it's probably a competition. Do you think, like, is his mentality like, if it's not me, if I don't create this, you're fucking done? Because this is a joke. Why would you do this to these people? Because he's five years old. It's depressing. I feel so bad for Dijakovic, Mia Yim. Mercedes Martinez is in her 40s and she's, she's deprecated to this. Mercedes has a couple of years in her career left at most. And this is what she's wasting her time doing? I'm yeah. sorry to say, but she could be at AW right now, being the champion. I know, it's, and it's it's for real though. It's 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 it comes to a point. What the fuck? Why would you do this? And, and you know, there's people that who will say that. Well, you know, you're not letting it play out. And like um, I, like I told you two weeks ago about the Miro shit. Did am I yeah, am but, I right? You're right, but this is this is on another level of but, but, but bullshit. How? But how? Because. You know, I never thought T Bar was a name. I, I, I like. <laughs> listen, listen. The, the difference between Miro and and this is because, granted, did Miro look stupid? Yeah, but did he look stupid with a stupid name and a stupid costume? No. Is he? He's in a bad gimmick for sure. But at least he was still Miro. Nah, man. The whole intro is dumb. It doesn't. This shit is. Way His worse. Shit and their shit is the same shit. It, it, I think, but oh yeah, but Miro ain't dead for me. You can put rainbow sprinkles on shit. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Is, Mir- is Miro shit. is Miro retribution dead? Which I'm gonna say that from now on. By the way, that's the new saying on this show. If you end up fucking doing really bad for me, you're gonna get in the retribution level of failure. So are, I don't think Miro's there. But I, but I hear. Which you. by the way, um, I couldn't watch AEW this week because my TNT was not on my hotel. So uh, I don't know how Miro <laughs> did. How did Miro do? It, 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 like I said, it is still suspect for me. Right. Still suspect for me. But even so, when you're looking at what this could have been, yes, like I don't even know why they even brought it out now. You could have let the shit drag for the longest. You could have even let them tear up the the, the show for. A week before Survivor Series or yep. something like that. Yep. And then unveil them. After they lose or something like that. Oh, Which, whatever. By the way, what would be your ideal... Um, you know how Adam P- Pacitti books things? How would you have booked Retribution from the beginning? I would have booked it like Nexus. I really would have. And I would have... I, but I would have did it right. The, it, and I would have also put a big name figurehead in there. Like a Samoa Joe. Or like I said, or Seth Rollins. Or uh, 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 um, uh, 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 
new entry. You you just bring somebody that's from the outer loop that nobody would have thought would have been in WWE and have them as a lead in. Like maybe uh, I I can't even think right now because who's not in WWE right now? Right, right, right. Who who who's not in WWE right now would have who's a free agent? You could or, or somebody you could bring back. Eli Drake, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe or something like that. Like a, uh, like a fucking um, eh, who's a free agent right now? That's rough. Oh, I mean, look, EC three. Well, no, not EC. No, no, never mind. Never mind. I would even fucking not even let EC three go and let him do this. Yeah. But you know, I and this is what I thought about it. I'm sorry. You know who should have been the main staples of this, and you let them go. AOP. Yeah. AOP I'm pretty sure been. they have the masks. AOP. <laughs> they have these. AOP owns these. AOP should have been a main staple. That would have been their major tag team for this. With Paul Ellering back and all that shit. Yeah, right. And let Paul Ellering run this shit if you wanted to. What the My, fuck? My, uh, if, if I were to... Bo- if, yeah, you go just ahead, brought in the circus of clowns with this. And you know what's sad about that sentence? We know them as stars, not clowns. And WWE introduced them to us as clowns. It, it, it's it's offensive. Vince always says, "Did I uh, did I um what's it called? Did I offend your intelligence? Whatever the fuck he says. Yeah, you did. Because I know Mercedes Martinez. I know Mia Yim. I know Dijakovic. Shit. Where the hell is Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink go? That tag team could have easily been tag team champs in the fuck on Raw. Where?" Are the superstars I know and love? You killed them. You changed the name. You changed the costume, and you killed them. Dominic Dijakovic Red in wrestling, in the wrestling world right now, is non-existent. Mia Yim does not hey, exist. Hey Rondo, what's up, man? If what's you know, up, boy? Everybody, yo, Rondo, so please, bro, bro, bro. Phone lines over three one five three seven one four three six seven three three one five three seven one four three six seven. James Storm is a free agent. Yeah. You could have brought him in with this. And you could even brought him in with fucking um, Bobby Roode. Yeah, beer money. And bring it into like saying like, look, we're tired of this bullshit. Isn't it unfortunate knowing that Dijakovic does not exist anymore? That Mercedes Martinez does not exist anymore? All of them. They yeah. don't exist. The only two that I can say is like, Hey, you know what? You guys will make your way back in or whatever the fuck, even now. It's Dio Madden and Shane Thorne. Yeah. but They're on the irrelevant side of things, but they were they still had hope. Shane Thorne and fucking Brendan Vink were a tag team I invested in. Yo, I would, yo if I was a Mia Yim... I'd be fucking done. Or a fucking Mercedes or a fucking Dutch girl. I'd have went to the back and just pulled the mask off and said... I gotta go. I can't. I, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Yeah, no. I, I, I well, I asked you that on but, the phone. How the fuck did Dijakovic and them not say, nah, I'm good? But you know, it's funny because everyone goes, yo, you know, but if the money was good, you would have did it. I'm no. Like, you know, no. I could. I, I, I have this certain pride and certain. I, this throws pride out the window. There's, there's a certain way, a livelihood. This shit is crazy. They sold their souls to the devil. The whole. Rest- they are done. Not even the wrestling community just laughing at them, but how does this make you look good? And then what they did at the end of the show. Which was even worse because Dijakovic supposedly broke one of Vince's rules and forced a DQ on the match, um, causing the whole group of fucking Retribution members to come out. I just... My brother is laughing every five minutes about these names, bro. T-Bar. Slapjack. Which, by the way, um... I'll give the definition of Slapjack in a minute. Um, but Mace. Which, by the way, is it a little racist here? No, I... I, I'm, I, I, I saw him as Mace. I thought it was like the rapper from the 90s and shit. Oh, jeez. So, um... If anyone doesn't know what the word Slapjack means, I'll give you the quick uh, M.O. Slapjack in the Urban Dictionary refer or defined is when you put your put semen on your hand and smack someone in the face with it. I'll give you an example. <laughs> you gonna show me now? <laughs> no, no, in a sentence, dickhead. <laughs> Lisa 
didn't make me dinner tonight, so I slapjacked her in the face. Yeah, that's not a really good example. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, but it doesn't ever... Here's a good example. Uh, I was fucking with this shorty, and she didn't let me... <laughs> nut in her mouth. She didn't let me nut in her mouth, so I came on it and then slapped on the face with it. That's a better slap example. Jacked her. Yeah, I slapped her. I slapped jacked the shit out of her. That's a better fucking example for it. Do you expect this to last long? How, if we were to place bets right now, we can look back on this episode of Cutting a Promo. How long will you give Retribution? Because I will give it the day after Survivor Series is over. So I'm going to give it... When is Survivor Series again? Um, November. I'll give it until... Uh, it'll, it'll be over by December. It'll be dead. And I hope they go back to their original gimmicks because this is sad. Sad. It's depressing. It, it's a waste of this talent. And I'm sorry, Dijakovic. I love you, but you sold out, Pa. I would have said no to this shit yesterday. What the fuck were you thinking? So how long would you give Retribution? Oh, man. They're going to go through... Cause I say Survivor, I say Survivor Series and it's done. They're gonna, they're gonna go no, I think they're gonna throw they're gonna go through the next pay per view and try to stretch it because I, I you're fucking up the whole gimmick of everybody else, especially with the hurt business yeah, shit. They're fucking up the whole entire show. It doesn't make any sense. Like this is wrong on so many levels. I don't think anyone understands. Like, and, and I and I said earlier on the show, this is a funeral because it is a funeral. They're dead. They're done. They're deceased. They're 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 finished. This is wrong in more ways than you think. Um, I, I wonder what Triple H thinks. Oh, he hates That's, this. He hates this. I, I I honestly do. I really believe that he hates this. He has to hate this. Who likes this? I want to find one. But can you can you imagine that you're sitting there? Producing these stars and like they get treated like this. They, do you think that he looks at them and goes, "I'm so sorry this happened to you. I'm sorry." I think Triple I... H gets offended because, in all honesty, think about this. Pretend you're we were talking about basketball, right? You're the coach of a basketball team, and you choose this one player, and you grind, and you make him, and and you and you and you work with him for years to get him to the level you want him to. And college calls him to get to get recruited, and college changes his entire style up for the wrong, and right. it, it makes him a terrible player. It makes him a, makes him from a re- recruited player to a waste on a bench. How does that make you feel as a coach? I think it's just a big middle finger to yeah to so, progress. Yeah, it's a middle finger to Triple H, and I don't know how Triple H doesn't stand up for himself, but it's clear. It's clear that that Vince McMahon goes out of his way to ruin this NXT talent to prove a point. That if you don't go by Vince, you aren't getting over on the main roster. I can't. I can't Simple. Even, I can't even. I can't even imagine having to think about being in that situation to where you're having a good life in NXT, and 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 NXT, and you know you you're you're in content. You're chilling. Mag- uh, solid matches. You're content. Everything's good. And then you hear. Vince wants you for the main roster. It's it, that it's, sounds like um. It's almost like the Grim Reaper knocks on your door. It's almost like somebody told you you have st- uh, testicular cancer. It's like, no, really? Which, by the way, the rumor it used to be cool two two years ago. Yeah, but now it's like what? No. Which, by the way, um, everyone's wondering. Tommaso Ciampa was supposed to be in Retribution. Um, he was, and want to know what he did? He said, "No, or I'm leaving." Yeah, the company. Yeah. He actually gave an ultimatum. He said, I'm not doing this, and if I do, I'm quitting the company. How about you guys do that too? And it's funny because he would fit perfectly, but if you gave him the better story for it. They'll probably name him Sickle or fucking not Axe <laughs> or fucking um, – or, I love um, it because when you hit me up, you, you know, the one thing you was telling me about was the, the, the names. I'm like, oh, my the God. The names are horrendous. It's terrible. T-Bar, you know, Slapjack, and Mace. You know, I'm waiting for the really stereotypical names that um, Mercedes Martinez and, and Mia Yim will get. It's like Mercedes. Reference to Glow. She will be – Mercedes Martinez will be like Switchblade. Because and fucking what, Mia Yim's going to be Fortune Cookie. Or – no, no, no. It has to be a weapon, so it will be like Numb Katana. Katana. Or nunchuck. 
Oh my yeah. god. I'm scared for next week on Raw. Oh my god. I, I am scared because Mercedes Martinez Merce- Mercedes, is. A- Mercedes Martinez is going to be machete. Also. Machete. It's going to be terrible. Which, by the way, rumor was her name was supposed to be um, Shatter. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, guys, you know, it's unfortunate. WWE has stinkers now and again, but I think this, this has topped the stinker list. This is officially the worst thing I've seen Vince McMahon do. And I say that a lot, but... This... No, Jason. He turned down not because of his neck. He turned it down because he didn't want to be part of that bullshit. Why would Ciampa turn it down because of his neck? Why would... No. Ciampa no. was like, no. He said, I'm not doing this stupid bullshit. And Gargano said the same shit. They all said I'm no. I'm not doing that shit. Gargano literally you told... You know what? He's like, you know what? If you don't want me... If you want me on that main roster, I'm I said, no, I'm gone. Fuck it. Gargano and Ciampa, by the way, Jason, went up to Triple H himself and said, "I'm not. Go- we're not going to the main roster or we quit. That's confirmed. Ciampa and Gargano were supposed to be called up a long time ago, and they said no, or I quit. How about Mercedes and Mia Yim and Dajakoi take suit? Because if I were them, I would have told them straight up, I'm not doing this. Yo, think of your logic. You're talking about he didn't go to the main roster because of his neck. What? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. He's wrestling on NXT. Yeah, so, so what, what, what point does it make? That doesn't make a point. That doesn't make a bad. That, no, that doesn't make any why, sense. Oh, because he's going to, oh, why? Because he'll, he'll see more action? No, he'll say, fuck that. Get rid of me. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to do this shit. I, it's, he got, they got called up because what they wanted to do was to, to entertain the NXT look in the main roster. But at the end of the day, they weren't playing that shit. Nope. Fuck out of here. Because they know what, Gargano. And fucking Ciampa or two, they will be the two highest fucking free agents in the business. Oh my god, there will be there will be a fight for those two. Hell yeah! So why would you think that the uh, NXT is definitely making that call to like? Oh, oh, oh we're keeping like, these motherfuckers. We gotta keep them, but we, we'll give them what they want. Get the fuck out of here! Right. Nah, let me ask you. About let me, let me ask you this: After seeing Retribution and what they've done with these horrible victims. Are we going to see a change in these main roster call-ups? Because there's got to be a stand with these NXT when people Vince going. When Vince dies. No, uh, listen, man. There's... When Vince dies. Which, by the way, you know what? I'm gonna, You know what I'm going to do? Um, we should record a little bit more, but we, we haven't had um, um, enough news yet for, for Wrestling Right Now. I want to fucking live stream the, um, the, the, the video you sent me. With what happens if Vince retires? Oh, the... Um, you want to use it for that after this is done? Uh, Yeah, I mean, we got to do Wrestling Rundown too, though. No, no, but I'm saying that we don't have enough news yet. I'll do, really? You sure? Me, yeah, let's give us a couple. Because I want to do this. Guys, don't go anywhere after we do this because I want to stream this. Because I think that fucking storyline that was put there is something that should be done now. Well, Adam Pachiti the guy. I mean, as much as he's been through bullshit, I mean. No, it's not Pachiti. It's oh, it's, sorry. Blompier. Yeah, well, he knows what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we'll, we'll do our thing, but come back to the, to, to the wrestling page because, honestly, why can't this happen now? Because Vince is a piece of shit, dude. Uh, I, I don't get it. and I, His it, company sucks. It almost it, seems like he as wants as to when... kill this fucking company, and I've been saying it for the longest. He <laughs> does not want to give this company to Triple H or his daughter or fucking Shane. He doesn't want to. Nah. He'll die with the company. No. Nah. This fucking... It's dead in the water. This fucking retribution shit... But you look, yo. I looked. I looked at hey. it on screen. I looked at it on on, on 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 pictures, and I go, "Wow, this is terrible." It's not just bad. It's awful. It's dead. It's done. This company sh- shows me one thing: that Vince McMahon will always win the rule. It'll always be his choice. And until it, that doesn't happen, these guys are fucked. All NXT guys are fucked, and that's it. So retribution is dead, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give him a month to live. So you could all you could all be positive about there's, this. I won't be. So. There's nothing that they can do right now that was nothing save. will save this. Save it. No, nothing. it's done. And, and actually, speaking of um, you know what culture and all that, they, they 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 usually make lists of the worst gimmicks in wrestling history. Retribution's on that list. Has to be. They're on top ten. I think they might be right under the gobbledygooker. No, they, this is corny. It's 
fucking cheesy. It's pathetic. The names are the worst wrestling names I've ever heard in my life. I'd rather have Tugboat as a name than fucking T-Bar, okay? <laughs> it's an epic fail, so. My my wrestling name is going to be fucking um, Taint. Yeah, like. I'm going to be uh, Taint. Taint Parkinson. <laughs> No, I just I just want to be taint. I'm between everything. I'm a taint. It, 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 it's sad. So rest in peace to retribution and get the fuck off my screen. Guys, when we come back, we're going to have on the podcast, we're going to have wrestling right now as well as uh, around the square circle. So don't go there and stick around. I really want to do uh, a, a sneak preview and not even sneak, uh, just a, a, a fucking um, – of a, a viewing on our Facebook page of that Adam Pacitti shit because it's fucking – Amazing! I wish it could get be. I, I wish it could be done now because it's so simple, so easy. Well, I think WWE's shown us one thing and one thing only. We could book that shit for, uh, any day of the week. Yeah, so. So, yeah. Be creative. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return. Check you guys in a sec. What's going on, everybody? As you know, this is Matt Olski from Termical Tabloid, but when I'm not here talking wrestling, uh, I have another hobby, which is collecting Funko Pops. So uh, if any of you guys want to check out my new page, The Funko Hub on Instagram, we promote Instagram lives, sales, raffles, and just talk about anything Funko related, uh, what you're collecting, what I'm collecting, and supporting the community at its finest. So guys, check out The Funko Hub on Instagram uh, for all your Funko needs and uh, to support the Funko community together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown. Thank goodness I got to get a mask off. Woo. That was yeah. that was a segment. Shout out to my boy Artex, man. This is my tattoo artist as well. He's a talented um designer and creative dude. He uh hooked us up with the mask this week, man. You liked it, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know what I You were able to breathe through it. No, that shit was awesome, man. Uh, great detail. Which by the way, um you know, you know what I'm not happy about? I don't know how long you're gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna wait for this tattoo, bro. But you gotta hold your end of the bargain with this dude. No, this, I'm with, going, with this no, turn buckle, going, bro. Don't, don't leave me hanging. Now. Um, sir, I got the ink. I know. I'm just saying, uh, sir. I know. I, I but I got permanent I, ink on me. Expecting my uh, brother across uh, the table me, from me got, to get I, permanent. I, I, ink. I got. I got. What, what did I put money in? Into the big boy. Exactly. But, 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 exactly. But but I'm but. But, but I'm just saying but, 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 I'm uh, on the other side of the table I'm, I'm waiting for the permanent ink Brother So, so let's just say it like this um, You're paying for my tattoo Am I? Oh uh, yeah Definitely If you want me to get this tat Depen- I mean, I, Depends I, I, on how much it is You motherfucker I, I just sat there and, and <laughs> Listen bro cause one, no, cause, no cause one person told me That the same tattoo I got For $100 over here Was three fifty, So they could suck beef Okay And plus I don't know if you're waiting For your tattoo guy to come in no, 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 no! I said I'll get it when I get it. And I said I'll go so to when, your art. So when and will I said you get I will it? go to your art. Um, whenever you have the money to pay All for right. my shit, because I'm, I'm, I'll start work tomorrow. I, so I got you. I, I pay for this. All right, I'm just saying I have my, my leg has a turnbuckle on it. I'm waiting for yours to have one as well. Bro. Oh, it'll happen. I'm not a bitch about it, but my whole shit is like, dude, my Listen, money. Don't, don't be, don't be, um, my, don't be Brian on on Nitro. All right. Uh, don't don't go. Uh, Cave your chest in, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> damn son, for real. So as always, I am the shit. house started this segment to the Robin Ophelia Quibbs Oski. So Oski, take it away. All right, guys, the first piece of news we have is COVID mayhem. Uh, as AEW and NXT <coughs> have many breakouts of COVID this week, Lance Archer was a victim. Uh, um, I think Wade Barrett was a victim. Uh, ben Carter. The list goes on and on. Wade Barrett. Was, Wade Barrett. Yeah, he wasn't on commentary this week. Yeah, no, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't say that he was. Yeah, they don't, but who, who NXT does? 
Okay. I, uh, remember? Remember the rule. They right. can't say you have COVID anymore in that company. So AEW members, NXT members, another COVID outbreak has happened. And uh, it seems like Vince and even Tony Khan is kind of, tr- kind of trying to sweep this under the uh, under the rug. Uh, Red, uh, what are your thoughts on on AEW and NXT? How they're taking care of the COVID situation? How they're treating it? I mean, two different games here. AEW is bringing in a live audience, and NXT is not. But uh, w- w- what's your review of these two companies and t- during this COVID time in, in terms of safety and, and what you're seeing on TV? You can't monitorize what people do outside of the building. They're gonna. Hang this ain't out. no NBA bubble. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is. By the way, NBA. who won that shit? I don't even. I don't even pay attention. Um, but you can't monetize that because people are going to be doing extra shit, especially with, look, look at, look at what happened with, um, Lance Storm with AEW, which uh, AEW, yay. Yeah. We don't, we don't have a sloppy uh, slop shop, a sloppy slop shop, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I got hit too. And Lance, Lance, um, Lance Archer was sitting there and he fucking, is with an old man and he got hit with that shit. Yeah, so, which you can only imagine this, how dangerous that would you be. You could Jake do says. whatever you can to try to, to monitor this shit, but shit happens, man. It's it's unfortunate. You know, shit happens, but do you think they're doing the right thing here? Like with AEW bringing in a live audience? It's technically outside, right? Yeah, and Jesus Christ. I gotta fucking learn how to get the noise out of this shit. But, um,. Yeah, I mean, honestly, to me, as much as I sit there and go, what the fuck? You guys ain't doing what you're supposed to do. But we got to find a way to uh, to work on getting things put together properly, man. And, you know, with, with 25. But I don't even think it, it, it was that the audience did it. It was because they hung out with motherfuckers. They ain't know who they were hanging out with. Right. That's it. So, listen. Outbreaks are going to happen every once in a while. It's it's hard to control, but um, I think NXT and AEW aren't doing that bad of a job. Yeah, it just happens. Well, whatever. Y2J is telling you, if you can't say something entertaining, then shut the hell up. <laughs> this week was Stephanie McMahon's birthday, but let's not blow the candles out just yet. Seems like Stephanie McMahon... Mc- Mc- can't even speak. Seems like Stephanie McMahon has sold 43% of her WWE stock, and uh, people are wondering why. Red, does she know something that we don't? No, because then she'll go to jail. But um, Vince (laughs) Vince did the same thing. 43%. That's a a chunky margin. Yeah. Uh, Why why do they – because this has happened for the past year. Vince is selling stock. Triple H has sold some of his stock. Stephanie has sold some of the stock. What's the main purpose of that? Because I never understood the main focus point of them selling the pieces of stock. You sell out when you have enough money to get a a profit, a profit and then you know you still have enough there to be still a, a, a powerful broker in the company. So that's what it is when you own your own fucking company and you have your own stock in it. Wow. I mean, granted, sure. I just don't. I just feel bad for the forty-five fucking motherfuckers who bought their shares. And shit. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Well, not even that. Just anybody who bought it was a part of that forty-five share shit. Because if WWE keep, they keep pushing out the product they have, sooner or later they're gonna hit a riptide and it's gonna be fucking over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 coming. So you know, gotta roll some yeah. punches here, pal. Shazam! So, Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss this week announced that they their new tag team name. Red, do you want to do you know what the, the, that that name is? Is it the new New Midnight Express? Yes, the new Midnight Express. Basically, a rib of Jim Cornette making them fun of them with the Cornhole Express. And Jim Cornette's already said on his show that he might be bringing this to court. No, no, he's not. He Legal la- trouble. No, when you hear the episode, he laughed at it. He said it's funny. It's a rib that. They they are not able to do that because the properties is already is already owned, so they can't do anything like that. But what, you know, what do you think? Of, what do you think of the name idea? The name's terrible. You know, I always sit there and I think of Joey Janela as that dude that thinks that he's funny, but he's not. 
He's like, okay, all right, my guy. He ain't keep funny it, at all. Actually, he's keep, a piece of shit. Keep it pushing. That's like, my gimmick, right? He's Joey Janela's a piece of shit. Joey Janela's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. But honestly, it's like, all right. Some people aren't meant for comedy, bro. No, they're but, not, and he's one of them. But I, I, I it, it got the, it got the social media push, and so you know that that's something smart that they did. Yeah, absolutely. They, they they tried and and they tried making a negative with Jim Cornette. Like I said last week, those names were horrendous. Into a positive, I guess. Um, I kinda, but it, I kind of like the Jersey it, Boys better though. But it also shows that they, that Cornette is on their radar. Cause why would you even care? Yeah, exactly. Speaking of bitter people who have no comedy whatsoever. Brian Myers and Carl Anderson shot, um, did a shoot interview on Paul Heyman this week, and they said that they saw no genius in Paul Heyman whatsoever. Uh, they were on the Talking Shop podcast, and they were on the show to talk about a bunch of things, including their toy collections, etc. Myers discussed his exit from WWE and said there was some talk about ECW and Paul Heyman in the late 90s. Um, both of them said that as much as Paul Heyman is known for his time in ECW and his presence in early SmackDown, their time with the company, they said they saw absolutely no genius in Paul Heyman whatsoever. And actually, they don't get the hype of Paul Heyman, saying that he wasn't one of the most creative guys in the room. Clearly, you and me are huge Paul Heyman fans, so we know this is this is some hate of bullshit. What are your thoughts on, 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 on what they said about Paul Heyman? Because... Um, he uh, Anderson said he goes. I don't think it's genius. And no, don't say it's because I can't say I can't stand Paul Heyman. That's a true opinion I've had for years. Here's 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 my thing about Heyman. It's not about what he can create for angles and programs. It's about if somebody brought something to his table for an angle or program, he can make it make sense. And yep. I think that's where his genius is at because there's a lot of people who listen, you see what the fuck is going on in wrestling right now. Unfortunately, a lot of this shit is either comedy fodder or it's it's gone to a point to where people are just going to the ring and making a storyline that seems like it makes sense but it doesn't. Right. I think with Heyman, he did more when he learned early on from the WCW, the NWA days, and the early ECW stuff. It was like, you bring me an idea, and I know how to work it. And I think that's what's lost with people. You know why I say that? Because I think I'm the same way. Really? I, 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 I'm creative with stuff, but I'm not going to be the one that starts off a program. I'm going to be the one that tells you, okay, point A, point B, point C can work, but you have to make sure that it's legitimate to learn. I don't, I, 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 I don't see that happening with this AEW, WWF kind of shit now, and with these guys saying this, even Impact gets lost with it. It's like, what the fuck is your reason for the bullshit? They're hating for real, bro. They're on yeah. some hater shit, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, so it's like, you know what? And uh, to be honest with you, I was a fan of Carl Anderson. I'm not anymore. I have no respect for the guy because he took a he, Listen, we get it. You got fucked. But you know what you do in life when you get fucked? You move on. And you make it, You make chicken shit and chicken salad. His career now is... Ba- him and, no, no, and this is a hot take, I guess you could say. I think him and Carl, um, Doc Gallows are irrelevant in Impact. I don't think they've made any impact in Impact. And I think they're just fucking mad like five-year-olds that got kicked out of a company. Yeah, 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 and it looks really bad because I think they look terrible right now. Yeah, it's just like, okay, um, let it go, sir. You have your own podcast to air it out. Let it go. Next story we have on Wrestling Rundown is quite possibly something that I never thought I'd be able to say. Um, it's unfortunate. We have, we have a passing in the wrestling world this this uh, this week. Uh, 
Road Warrior Animal passed away this week at age... 60. It, it, it sucks. 60. Uh, Joe Laurinaitis, which he's John Laurinaitis' brother? Yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's a yeah. uh, that's a very unfortunate. And his son played in the NFL. That, that, yeah, that... People are shocked because he was at J- he was at fucking the wrestling universe like last week. He was at wrestling universe last week, and he had just done a podcast the night before. Yeah, and he had uh, the night before, the day before, like two days before, whatever. But he he had talked about his thoughts on what was going on with the retribution stuff, and, and the next say? morning, uh, he wasn't a fan of it. He he was like, "How is that you're gonna bring in?" And I'm, I'm paraphrasing, ladies and gentlemen, but his his whole thoughts about was how you're gonna bring in a, a a stable like this, but don't have a main event individual to leader. lead this. Yeah, like Kevin and Owens. And he says you had two positions: you had the opening of the show and the closing of the show, which is the pinpoint of getting everything over, and you did nothing with it. Nothing. So, um. It was it was weird because I had just read that sudden death too. Like, yeah, I had just read that on the overnight, and then when I was on my way home, I saw that he passed. I was like, "What the fuck?" I thought it was a rip. Yeah, yeah, but it was, it's 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 true. Did, did, did they announce how he died? Natural causes, but at sixty, at 60? what the nah. fuck is natural cause? You know, to me, it's nah, very I don't believe that. It's very vague, but to me, natural causes to me is like. You die in your uh, sleep. My heart stop and I'm done. Yeah, that's the, literally what natural causes is. Like your heart just randomly stops and you die in your sleep. Yeah. Like my grandma just passed away from natural causes. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I I found that. All- but uh, do you have any memories of uh, Road Animal? Because oh please, uh, go, uh, we can talk a little bit about him for a second. There's not not much news left, but I will say, um, because I'm the young person on this show. The only time I've seen with Ro Warriano, besides looking back at footage, was his time with Heidenreich, which he even said was a disaster. wasn't He wasn't a big fan of, and uh, I actually put on his fucking um, his football fucking. Oh, you did? Um, years ago, it was the la- I think it was the last ICW show before it closed down the first time. All right. I, w- I didn't even buy. It. I didn't even pay for it. I was chilling <laughs> with him, and he was like, "You want to try it?" I'm like, "All right, bro." And you took a picture with it? No. <laughs> I'm no, sorry. I took I took a, I took a picture with a few belts, but not with not with that shit. But what well, what what are your memories of with Animal? Because now him and Hawk are um, are reunited, unfortunately, in the uh, the pearly gates. Um, they were the most recognizable. Rest, sorry, shit. God damn. Recon- hiccups and hiccups. The <laughs> most recognizable tag team or wrestlers in the business when I was getting into it, when I was watching it, the painted faces. Yeah. Uh, the the physique, the music, yeah, man, what a can rush. beat us, and the powerhouse that he was, and <gasps> fuck, I, this is gonna bother me. Yeah. Um, so when you hear the theme music and the look when it came out with the spike and the leather and shit like that, I was like, these motherfuckers are gonna come in and whip somebody's ass and shit. Yeah, they were, you know, and that was during the highlight of the tag team division in WWE, probably the best it's ever been. Fuck that, I'm talking about NWA, WCW, and all that shit. Everybody was like, I, I, my favorite tag team is the Road Warriors. But the funny thing about it was like, they weren't really that proficient when it came to wrestling. Like, they were just powerhouses. And. When you look at them, they, yo, humongous is Japan, great in Japan. Uh, um, they were they were those guys that were the hot shots. They would come into a territory for four or five months and blow it up and make money. It, it, it was crazy. If anyone hasn't seen the Dark Side of the Ring episode of the Road Warriors, yeah, exactly. Please do. Absolutely amazing episode, and actually, Animal was on that episode doing um, commentary for like being you know putting his sense in. It's just crazy to think that he just did his podcast like a day or two before, and then it's like he's gone. It's like, wow. and, and I'm sorry, but like I hate to be like a, a person to shit on this, but I really hate this the natural cause thing. That's not it. It had to be something else. Had to yeah. be a heart attack. Yeah. It, there's no way at 60 years old you die of natural causes. Yeah, it's I hard to believe the dude. The dude was a was a legend, is and it always will be a legend in the wrestling world. So, rest in peace to World Warrior Animal.
him and um Hawk will be winning the tag belts up in heaven. Uh, it died at the age of sixty. Uh, rest in peace, animal. Twenty twenty is just giving out L's this year, man. Big time. You know what? You just made the list. Roman Reigns confirms that he will be having new theme music and gear uh, when uh, a major storyline will be taking place. Basically saying he has a new song, guys. He handpicked, but it will. It, but it's being saved for um, a moment further in the storyline. And he announced that he will be wrestling shirtless moving forward. I know what the song is. Do you? I tell him, whoa. Imagine it's the woo. I'd be weak, bro. I'd be weak. Red, what are your what, what are your thoughts on this amazing announcement? Oh my god, finally, man. Oh, it's like shit. I hope About it's not time. a fucking swear because dude. Nah, I don't think so. You need to fucking change your game up, man. He said he said I got bulky for a reason. I wanted to show Vince I don't need a fucking vest to fucking wrestle yeah, anymore. I'm like, Jesus, man. And and I am so with what's going on with him right now. It's Hell yeah. fucking dope Hell yeah. as fuck, man. But that's the problem with WWE. I feel like they focus on four things and, like, three things, and they focus on those and don't give a shit about anything else. Which, by the but way... How you which, make by the way, Smackdown, Ro- how do you make SmackDown a decent-looking show now? It happens. And they Raw flop. looks like shit. Roman Reigns said it perfectly. He said, if you want to eat a quick cheeseburger at McDonald's, go to go to Raw. We'll take care of the flame and yawn on SmackDown. Ah, I like that. That's what he said. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. yeah. Um, he, it's true. SmackDown is is, a, is a clearly a better show right now. Um, I think they're doing most things right, and Roman Reigns deserves to wrestle. You know, with new gear and new music. Uh, do you think Roman should have the no shirt with the pants, or like he should have whole new gear? What, what, what's, I, what's, what, I what, what, go what, what, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find it, but I, I did a creative wrestle on one of the WWE games that I figured that with no shirt and the uh, and the uh, and the pants works for him best. I I really do. I listen. There's hope for Roman uh, to be a heel. Uh, Chris Jericho said it perfectly. He's he's. He, I think Roman Reigns, Roman's in the best spot to be a heel right now. It's gonna work, and uh, we'll see the new music and the and the gear when it comes. Because I sunned you. Because I woo woo woo. What you got? Uh, I think I'm done. All right. So just a quick run off of my end. Uh, Melina has confirmed that she has not signed with WWE. Well, so has a few other people, and they still would come. So I don't, I, I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Morrison even was like, "I'm not coming back, guys," and he came back. Yeah, I, 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 I just go with the fact of what she said, and you know, when she does pop up, which is great for fucking wrestling, is that you can sell the fact that you know, the um, the dirt sheets aren't right, and just do oh, something yeah. different. I fucks with that. Um, what's gonna go? Oh, we need it for the show coming up. We 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 need to find a way to to have this because I know you're not gonna do it, but I am. We need the WWE wine. We yeah have to yeah. Get well, this. I don't drink, but I'll have a taste. Oh my god, I need the 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 Undertaker wine and the Ultimate Warrior wine. Which, by the way, I know that's gonna it's gonna taste like piss and vinegar. That shit is gonna be it's horrible. It's gonna be absolutely terrible. That on that Undertaker shit is gonna be phenomenal. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna take like afterbirth. I don't give a fuck with nobody. Like trash. No, but that that Ultimate Warrior shit is gonna taste horrible. And um, look, I'm happy that WWE is exploring other ventures. Are they? Because they basically just stole the Chris Jericho fucking <laughs> exactly. a little bit of the bubbly did gimmick. You, did you not sense the sarcasm? Yeah, yeah, yeah I tried to. <laughs> it's like, come on. They basically. Really? Said, Oh, Jericho made some money off some alcohol. Yeah, exactly. He's like, come on. Like, fucking really? Um, also, uh, John Cena, congratulations to him. He has a sick oh, uh, TV, spinoff TV series of a... Uh, it's, it's crazy because the, the movie's not even out yet, but nope. he he's already has a spinoff on uh, HBO Max for... The Peacemaker. So. Yeah, which clearly... Which I don't know anything about The Peacemaker. I'm not really a big DC guy, so... I have no idea what the fuck the gimmick is, but I'm assuming it's going to be like a Deadpool kind of character. Yeah, people love him. They do. I they, think they, John's a great actor. Shit. They, they was, no, but they were saying that the character and him work hand in hand. So, yeah. So, uh, oh, I'm excited for it, which, by the way, they're, they're, even, they're, they're even making a uh, uh, The Boys spinoff. 
Yes, and I want to see what that's about. Yep. I like, I haven't seen a single episode from there yet. I'm waiting for all the episodes to come out. Yeah, by the me way. too. Uh, but, uh, John Cena's proven that he's a good actor, man. People are saying he's actually a better actor than The Rock. Mm. You know you know what's funny about that? Is, he's getting, he's under stripes. Let me ask you. When you see The Rock acting, do you see The Rock? No. When you see John Cena act, do you see John Cena? Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, but that's because I, but that's because I was I grew up with John Cena though. I feel like if I was like in the 90s with The Rock, I'd be the same with The There's Rock. There's a though. football movie that The Rock did. Uh, I don't know the you game have plan? Seen. No, no, not that shit. There's another one. <laughs> it's about uh it's about kids that uh that that were um they were they were juvenile delinquents and shit and he, he put them in the football team. I think you might I think Sounds like might. the longest yard. No, 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 no. <laughs> this, this was more, it was more serious when he, nah, he actually did really nah, good. I did not. I got to put you on to that. But um, it's kind of tough when you're a wrestling fan and you see these guys. You're like, Of course, eh. because you're so used to like. But but, uh, the, but, but, the, but, this but is, I think I can separate myself with Rock than I can with Cena right now. With, right now. Yeah, like, no, I can because I don't think. I, I, you know what I think is going to be John's turning point when he. The Fast and the Furious movies. Right. I think then we're going to be like, all right, there's a difference here. Because that's a big fucking role. No, I'll tell you when I, I saw him in the rundown and all that shit, I was like, oh, shit, I, he can go. Yep, cock blockers. Yeah. Uh, which I found funny. No, I found cock blockers funny. That wasn't him and cock blockers. Where, where? John Cena. Uh, no, I'm talking about um, 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 Rock. Was in, um, for me, was the rundown. Oh, I love the rock in um, Jumanji. No, you're right, though. Cena in fucking Cop Box was fucking hilarious. I thought it was great. Yeah. He did a great job on yeah. that on that film. But when it comes to The Rock, I mean, I'm not a fan of Fast and Furious. And quite frankly, I think it's overrated as fuck. Yeah. Hot take. Hot take. I think it's terrible. <laughs> um, which, by the way, the new movie, they're supposed to go to space. Suck my dick. Um, <laughs> sure, suck my dick. That sounds stupid. Uh, but Star Wars, Fast and Furious. Yeah, like really. Um, I want to see who buys that shit. Nobody. I, I can't um, believe that. It's the death of the Fast and Furious move, film franchise. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you, you know, Vin Diesel in, in space. Space. <laughs> space, space, space. Like, um, is your car gonna be like the DeLorean? Go yeah, fuck exactly. yourselves. Um, uh, I guess we could go back and forth real quick, one time each. Uh, what's your favorite movie from The Rock? He's been in. Uh, it could be rego- just him. Doesn't matter what it is. I I, I am a Don't fan of Scorpion. Ro- King, I am, no hell no. It wasn't that bad. Um, get shorty. He was actually really good in. Okay. Um, put him as the lead. I can't. If, ooh, wait. Jumanji uh, wasn't bad, and I liked him in Jumanji. Yo, as a matter of fact, Jumanji one and two. Yeah. he's fucking awesome. I think he did great in Jumanji. You know what? You thank you. He did awesome in both. Of them. I think he did great. Uh, yeah. Him and Jack Black are a great fucking combo. For me, I'm cheating. I'm going with my Moana. Him as Maui was fucking awesome. But everybody would go to that though. Mm-hmm. It wasn't said. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I'll go, I'll go with the cheap one there. Uh, What's your favorite John Cena movie? Cock blockers. So yeah, far, he's yeah. still young in the acting game, in my opinion. He hasn't done what The Rock has done. I, 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 I really can't give him as much credit right now. You know what? And I'll be the first one to say it. And this is like another hot take, which you'll be like, really? I don't think he was that bad in the first Marine. I think I actually think the first Marine was actually the best Marine of all Marines. I, 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 I actually thoroughly I, I enjoyed. I watched that in say, theaters and I actually I enjoyed would actually it. I say, although he was part of that um the, the the daddy movies and all that. Yeah. I thought he was actually really good in the fucking Marine movies. I, I enjoyed the first Marine. Marine. I actually remember yeah. watching that in theaters and going, "This is actually not a bad movie." Um, unfortunately, they went to shit after that. But <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 let's do research because I'm done with the news. So uh, let's go over this real quick. Hold on. Let's tell him who. What movies? Has John Cena been in? I got you right now. Hold There's on. one that he he was with um Amy Schumer that people like. Okay, John Cena's been in um well he's gonna be in the Suicide Squad. He's gonna be in Fast and Furious Nine. Cock blockers. People liked him in Bumblebee. I haven't seen it, so yeah, I can't. They, yes, they, uh, yes. I I never seen it, but I heard he was good in that as well. Um, supposedly he was really good, which. Wow, I'm bugging. He actually was in Daddy's Home One that's, and that's Two. That's one of the Daddy movies. Yeah, I'll tell you. Da- yeah, no, yeah, yeah. great. Um, he did the Fred movie. Fuck out of here. <laughs> um, people actually liked him in Legendary. Um, remember the wrestling movie? I did. I do believe I watched it, but I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, don't. what does I tell you about it? Yeah. And 
Yo, he has so little movies that in the movie category is Taboo Tuesday from 2005. He's going to get it, though. I'm telling you. He, 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 no, it's coming. It is it's coming. coming. Which, by the way, um, quick hot take. Dave Batista said that The Rock isn't a good actor. Ooh. What do you think about that? Because I think Batista should not be talking. I mean, granted, you were given that Drax role. Besides that and Stuber. Out of all three three, three wrestlers, who's who's done well? The Rock. No, not 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 money-wise, but as acting-wise. Um, the Rock. Okay, I, I would go the same, but it, because you, you gotta you, love, you, you gotta I, love Batista as Drax. I love Batista and Drax, but what else you got? What else is in your holster? Yeah, 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 you can't. Yeah, you true. have one bullet in your holster. I have Stuber. No, 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 no. What, what, what else do you have? Believe me, he's a, he is the best Drax. Oh, he did a movie called Bushwick, which I want to watch. One day, I, one day we should do a live, uh, live, a live stream and watch him in Bushwick. Yeah, we should because I got to see what this fucking dude's about. Like Batista was also in um, um, Blade Runner. Okay, Dune. Well, they said he was good on that. He's oh, in the new movie Dune. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Hotel Artemis. He was in um, Vin Diesel Riddick. I think Escape we should plan too. I think we should do a um, cutting a promo on wrestlers, wrestlers and movies. movies. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it and find out what it is. But other than that, what you got? Uh, that's it. I'm done tapping out, guys. When we come back, we're gonna have, of course, our around the square circle and uh, much more. Don't go anywhere. We'll we'll be back. See you guys in a sec. Check, 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 you. What's going on, everybody? It's Herbal Tablet here on Get Vocal. Oski, you in the building, sir? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you sound nice. It's a nice it's a nice sound you got going on over there. Nice and crisp. Nice and crisp. I'm crisp, dog. I'm crisp. Nice and crisp. Round the square circle, ladies and gentlemen. This week was a hell of a fucking week in wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Like always. But was it in a good way? No, not for the most part. So, round the square circle on Get Vocal. Make sure you check us out everywhere on all social media outlets. Check us out on the podcasting outlets on her as well on Get Vocal. So, let's get the shindig started on Around the Square Circle. Around the Square Circle, ladies and gentlemen, is the segment of the show where we do it live on Get Vocal and we discuss everything and everything and anything and everything and whatever everything everything was in wrestling from what we listened that to, was what we read. Real- that was really what, what an introduction that was. Thanks, I worked hard on it. Uh, everything that we watched, listened to, read in in wrestling for the week. So, uh, Oski, uh, what did you partake in wrestling this week so far? Um, well, I was on vacation, so I mean, I, I didn't listen to many podcasts, but I did. Uh, my only thing besides the the week in wrestling this week, um, I managed to finally dive in. To the world of glow. Oh, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Hey. The gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I finally dive, dove into it. Uh, I promised myself that I would start it after community. I did finish community. By the way, anyone who likes community, I love it. But the last season was terrible. Um, but the glow, ladies and gentlemen. I, 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 I put my, I dip my hand in the world of glow and. What a show! Uh, absolutely outstanding. I didn't realize how good it was until I saw it for myself. I don't know why I never gave it a chance. Uh, I don't know why I'm only watching this now. I know I'm late to the party, but I'm about to start season two, so I'll give you an update on that. But based on, so far on season one, phenomenal. Awesome Kong, great job. Carlito from Brothers Clay, phenomenal. Well, that's uh, okay because honestly, uh, I only saw season one. So, oh, what the hell? Yeah, I only saw season that? one. Yeah, that's my audio. I only saw season one, so it's all right. Season two and three are up, which I will be definitely binging. I finished season one in a day and a half. That's how much I binged and was bored on my vacation the last day of it. Uh, Allison Bree, which um, plays Ruth, uh, 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 Soya the Destroyer. 
what a fucking show, man. Uh, top to bottom, every episode mattered. I love the 80s vibe with the, with the music, which I'm starting to get into 80s music myself again, like more and diving more deep into it because of the show. But to give a quick review, um, it's about a, an actress who, who didn't even know the world of wrestling but was the only gig that she was offered, and she ended up falling in love with it, um, which reminds me, the one thing I'll say about the show is you know, I, w- I, I wish I, I wish I lived back then in the '80s, where like the storylines mattered and like you know, kayfabe wasn't broken. Cause like those, I would have loved being a fan back in the day, like seeing Soviet Russia versus America, like me truly thinking like they hate each other. Like you know, that's why wrestling was so over because you believed in it and you believed in the storylines, like Machu Picchu versus the Welfare Queen. Like it was, <laughs> the it, it 80s, was just, and the eighties was literally that fucking raunchy and and yeah. straight up that you could call somebody the welfare queen. The welfare queen, and her gimmick was. By the way, that was played by Awesome Kong. She threw her fucking food stamps in the ring. Come on, son, genius, genius. Um, Listen, there was even also, a, in real life there was a character that uh, the gimmick in um and in um. Uh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling. His name was the Dirty White Boy. Oh my God! Oh jeez. Well, uh, I'm assuming that was over back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. He was almost their champion at one point. Um, another gimmick on the show was like it was the two black ladies on, on the roster, and they were facing the KKK uh, because they wanted to spruce up the fucking storyline, and it was the most over match of the night. Um. I love, I love, I love, I love the part of the show. The main thing that connects me with the show is that because you know the main, the main character never was into wrestling. When the producer would talk wrestling lingo, lingo with you, with with her, she would have no idea what the fuck it meant. Like he would go off on her and say, "I hate you. You're ter- blah, 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 saying a bunch of mean things." And because she's the heel, that's a good thing, right? In the wrestling business, if you're a heel and you're told, "I hate you," that's better than being told I love you. Right, right, exactly. That means you but got had, heat but, and but, you're but, over. But she had no idea about that, so she was like, she would cry and be like, why does he hate me? It's like, no, you're working. And she ended up being the top heel, spoiler alert, whatever. She became a heel, and, um, you know, it all started off with the home wrecker, and then it went to, like, it, ugh, I suggest, my suggestion of the week is Glow, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do yourself a favor. Give it a try on Netflix. It is phenomenal. I can't wait to start season two. I heard, well, Joey Ryan was in season one. John Morrison was in season one. I can only imagine. The Kyle O'Reilly. Like, season... Kyle O'Reilly was in season one. Kyle O'Reilly was in it. Actually, the episode where they where they take Liberty Bell to the first to her first wrestling match, I think um, Christopher Daniels is facing Kazarian. Right, 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 yeah. So a lot of wrestling um, Easter eggs there if you're a true wrestling fan that, 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 that keeps you on your feet. I'm not going to front, like, the third episode in where they're going through training, like, early training. I feel like I was watching, like, a better version of Tough Enough. Yeah. And, I, and, like, it bl- and it blinked. I, like, I blinked and the episode was over. I'm like, no, I want to see more. I want to see them try to do the back body bump more. But then I was like, ah, fuck. So, any, if you're a wrestling fan, if you love the world of wrestling, watch Glow. That's like, all I got to say about I, the, the names. Liberty Bell, all right? <laughs> Liber, Li- Liberty Bell, Soya the Destroyer, the Welfare Queen, Machu Picchu. One of them was called Fortune Cookie, the Asian. <laughs> like the Asian is fortune cookie. Um, uh, the old, w- the two old ladies, which I know that was a ribbon, May Young and fucking, um, uh, and uh, May Young and fucking the fabulous Moolah. Right, yeah. I know that was a rib towards them. I know it because even in the eighties, they looked like they were ninety five years old. <laughs> so, so like I said, that's my suggestion of the week. That's what I watched besides the rest, the, the shitty week in wrestling. Glow was phenomenal. I'm gonna give it a good. I'm gonna give it a four and a half stars out of five. Uh, well, and, and I cannot wait for season two. Uh, on my end, I have to say that on YouTube, there's a uh, YouTube blogging group like a What Culture or or um, uh, or Botchamania or those kind of guys, but more like the What Culture and uh, and and that type of realm. They're called um, Parts Fun Known. Parts, parts fun, fun known. Parts fun known, and they have uh, my guy who I knew from uh, from what culture, but then left, and um, well, he left for conspiracy reasons. Well, not conspiracy. He was blamed for some bullshit on fucking um, just because he was trying to get laid. Basically, that's all it was. He was trying to fucking get laid, and who. Who hasn't been trying to get laid lately? So, I mean, come on. Let's get real. We're all stuck in the house. We all want poos. 
Yeah, so what the hell is that? Oh, so, um, yeah, my man Adam Blompier was, uh, cause he left, he left Ward Culture with a couple of other guys and they did, um, cult, um, Cultaholics. And then he had to leave Cultaholics right in the beginning of it for that. And because of it, and now he's with a group called Parts for Known. And we just did a live stream this a uh, couple of days ago of him booking what would it be when Vince quote unquote retires? Bullshit. When Vince dies. Yeah, it's not when he retires because that ain't happening. I, I, I've been saying for the longest that this dude has probably been uh, one of the smartest guys that's not in the business that should be in the business cause, because his booking has been spot on check him out on all the older versions of, of what culture of his booking of of how the um the illegitimate son of vince mcmahon uh what was the other one the return i believe he did the return of the undertaker uh, he, he, oh no um what was it the um ah oh, shit uh the vince mcmahon fucking Vin, uh, undertaker group the 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 i forgot what's the name of that group again um ministry of the ministry of darkness how yep. i should have booked that it he he does a he does splendid job there. So if that's something you guys should you guys should check out. It's in um uh, like I said, parts fun known and I'm blumpy and the guys they got they do well. That's another wrestling shit that I listen to on YouTube. Also this week, just quickly, Jim Cornette on his on his podcast made a good point about what's going on in wrestling these days. And to to be honest with you, if you listen to the episode, I believe it was in um the experience. He talked about there isn't really any more main eventers. There's not. There's not any legit superstar main eventers because like John Cena level, the John Cena level, John, and and it's a good it's a good debate to say it was John Cena our real last uh, main event guy because yep. I agree I think so we we used to we used to really get involved with waiting to see our favorite wrestlers wrestler wrestle excuse me and. Now we see them all the time. Like you, you can see Moxley wrestle every week. There's no build up to him. I think I think what WWE did perfectly back in John Cena's era was John Cena would probably wrestle once on Raw before a pay per view, and that was it. Like as a tune up match. Besides that, he was in segments, um, promos, which you know people say that more wrestling, more wrestling. I'm like, yeah, but. It doesn't make them special anymore. John Cena, pe- people love John Cena like for many reasons, but one of the reasons was at a pay per view, you knew he was, he, you knew you were getting John Cena 100, percent and that was the gimmick. Like he would give you his all, he would, be, he would bleed every single pay per view. Like his matches mattered. Now, unfortunately, guys like for instance Drew McIntyre, which I love Drew McIntyre, and I'm over with Drew, but he should not be wrestling every week on Raw. Um, I don't think champions should. I think they should be hyping up their stories and working on their on their promo craft more, and then. When the pay per view comes, you're like, oh shit! Now I'm gonna see Drew fight. Like I saw Drew fight every week this month. Like it's just it's it it, it, it it becomes a thing where it's like, now you're not special anymore. John Cena was special. He would he would go on Carlitos Cabana or the Jericho Tron 3000 for a couple of weeks, get into get into a couple of back parking lot brawls, and then have a real wrestling match. Yeah, we always say that certain guys, certain um build ups shouldn't have them touching at any time they shouldn't touch the fuck? i think that's how it should be all the yeah time. they shouldn't they shouldn't touch and a lot of times we've seen them way too involved in each other's storylines too quickly and like, um you know what pissed me off this week on smackdown mm-hmm. like i clash of champions is a triple threat ladder match um sammy Zayn, styles and um jeff hardy it's this sunday might i add which by the way we have to do predictions for that um and but you know, but you know what happened this week on SmackDown? They were they fought in a triple threat. It, 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 but it was for what? Giving us the match for free. And what did we get out of it? Nothing. Yeah. You know what it got me? A free entry to their match on Sunday. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. You're supposed to, you're supposed to tease us to make us want to look forward to. Like the Roman Reigns and Jay Uso, they're doing that right. Like they're, yeah. they, they barely touched, and when they did, it only it mattered. And they make me, I'm interested on Sunday now. Right. That's it, what it, that's what the key is, you know. So Jim Cornette has a point, but I also think it's not fully the wrestler's fault. I think it's no, COVID it's not. It's, 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 it's not the yeah, honest, it's fans, not the wrestler's the fault. Matter. Right. The fans really do matter at the end of the day. Like, like 
you know, I think Drew McIntyre could be on that level of, like, I, I love him every week. It's just there's no crowd, and he needs to stop wrestling every week. But you That's also, but the, the other the other thing is about that storyline or, or the gimmick or the way that they book it is to where you got under guys and they make, you know, the main eventers make them look good instead of the opposite where the under guys, the job guys, the guys that are just a mid card or whatever, their job is to make their the main eventers look phenomenal. Like you can't put. Uh, uh, a jungle boy in a match with Lance Archer who and Lance has a big big uh, 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 angle going with Moxley and you can't put him in a match with with, 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 with jungle boy and they have a 15 minute teardown it, it, you can't do that no no Lance can't. is supposed to go in there not sell for the for the, for the kid for the longest time maybe the kid gets one or two in and it, it looks shocking but at the end of the day lance gotta look like a beast and steamroll over these guys yeah i don't know why AEW books these monsters with 35 minute matches with jungle boys no offense to jungle boy he's a star but he's gonna be a star one day but there's no reason why we should have lance archer versus joe janela go 25 minutes right and that's that's the whole angle and wwe's it, it, it they're, they're guilty of it too nxt is guilty of it too these guys are guilty of Trying to put someone over when it shouldn't be necessary, and and like right now, I think they, I, I think I think the problem is the promoters have gone, <laughs> the, the, the promoters have gone pussy. No, well, the promoters, wrestlers now, because look at Jericho. Jericho now is he's he's this I gotta put these young guys over kind of idea before I retire. You know his mindset for that is, but in all reality, you really don't have to. You've earned your way to basically still be a main eventer and make things look good. Without it having to be that you're doing the favors for somebody, I, I, I don't, I don't understand why we have to do that every week. It, it, there, there's a certain build. Rey Mysterio, when he was in WCW, would got into these matches with certain guys, and would sometimes gets jobbed the fuck out. That, that's just what happens, you know. Yeah, you didn't, it's, it's you didn't, game. yeah, you didn't put Ray in a fucking match with Kevin Nash and showed he was the greatest fucking thing since Bruno San Martino. He got in there, he did his little quick spots, and Kevin Ash fucking squashed the shit out of him after a while. And they told him, yo, take your fucking mask off now. You know, you, you, there's, there's certain things you just don't do. Yeah, and they have a problem with not doing those things. With, with, it's, 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 it, it's an easy fix, you know? You got to make them more special, make them more stand out more, and help. And everyone on that roster should have a role. And regardless if you're a jobber or you're, you know, I hate that term jobber, but that's just what it is. You're enhancement talent. And that's your job to put these big guys over. But you also got you, you, you gotta th- think about it too. Everybody gets mad about the whole Brock Lesnar thing. Oh, he's never around. He's never around. Fine, he's never around to wrestle. Like I don't really need to see Brock fucking wrestle all the time. He's not. Around. It makes but, him lose his spark. But you know, we want to see him, a presence of him, make yep. make you know, make that's, him. But that's what I'm. That's what I'm like, Yeah, I right. I want Drew McIntyre to go and fucking like. I want Drew McIntyre to like come out and like do and like get into parking lot brawls and fucking. I don't want him in a match every week. He's fought Keith Lee three times this month. Can we not? Yeah, exactly. Can we not? And they've all ended in DQ. Can we not? That's lazy booking, man. Yeah. So that's uh, lazy. So yeah. Uh, so that's a that's a good question that to put up on the on the on the the group page this week about uh is the true main eventers gone? Are they gone from from wrestling? So. Uh, let's start it off the week. What, what do you have on, a, on the rundown? Oh, the matter of fact, you said we have to do um, predictions. Yeah, we'll do predictions right now. Let me just get the card up. Uh, in's Gold Rush is um, this Sunday, and we have predictions for you. Are you ready? Oh, great. Um, I'm probably going to watch this at home, crying, just wondering <laughs> what, what am I doing. Like, what ha- asking what happened to your life. <laughs> What happened in my life, and I have work the next day too, so it's like, oh, now it's gonna, you know, bullshit. So, on the pre-show, we have Oscar versus Zelina Vega for the Raw Women's Championship. You know the women's division is bad when your main title is on the pre-show. Yes, wow. sir. Oscar wins in five minutes. You th- you think it's gonna be that long? <laughs> it's gonna be a squad. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's too long, maybe. So, uh... I have I have Oscar. Yeah, I have Oscar as well, and it, it it. They threw her in the championship match way too quickly. <laughs> I still don't understand that. I don't get it. I don't. Bad I don't, booking. She yeah. Just, she just got into the women's division. You're like, all right, well, we have nobody, so you're in the championship. No. Yeah. They just feed her to the hounds. 
Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, which, well, I'll talk about that later. Uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championships. We got Nakamura and Cesaro versus the Lucha House Party. I have Nakamura and Cesaro win, and Kalisto turns heel on the Lucha House Party. Uh, yeah, we already seen that building up. So, you got Nakamura and Cesaro? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it as well. Which, by the way, once again... They, they, those two shouldn't even be a team. They're fucking singles guys. Like nah, you, no, no, no. You know what? Let me flip that. I'm actually gonna say the Lucha House Party wins. <laughs> I, I, really? Yeah, wow. I really believe that. Yeah, it's, I can see that happen. Oh damn! Well, if that happens, I'll fucking give you a churro. Well, um, uh, uh, no, that's not racist. <laughs> it's not a food in my, in my I'm glad head. you said it before I could. <laughs> yeah, the Raw Tag Team Championship is the Street Profits face Andrade and Angel Garza. I think finally, because they've butchered this to hell, and I'm over at this point. There is no way Andrade and Angel Garza lose this match on Sunday. There's no way. We have new Raw Tag Team champs. Um, I'm going to say remember who we're dealing with when it comes to this promotion and dealing with Raw, which, by the way, we'll get to, which is probably the worst Raw I've ever seen in the history of Raw. It's um, up there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say Street Profits win again. Oh, Jesus. I'll, I'll, I'll jump off the bridge uh, if that really happens because I, I love the Street Profits, but, like, come on, son, we're over there. You, 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 had, you both have fought 45 times in the past month. Can we not? Damn. The fuck? Uh, up next. What yeah, don't worry. That? That's, I don't know what the fuck just happened. There. The alarm just went up. Okay, good. Just go. Women's Tag Team Championship is we have Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax versus the Riot Squad. I have Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax retained. Same. Not Riot Squad's time yet. Same. Um, United States Championship is we have Bobby Lashley versus Apollo Cruz. Bobby Lashley retains by Cedric Alexander interference. Uh, yes, Bobby retains as well. Yes, I'll take that. Intercontinental Championship triple threat ladder match. My match of the night. I'm looking forward to this the most. We have Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn. Uh, winner take all. Supposedly they're they're, they're pushing this as a they're gonna, whoever wins has to gr- grab both belts and will be the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. Um, I have um, Jeff Hardy retains. I am going to say because they got to get the they have to take the belt off of Sammy. No, I am actually going to say because no. Sam, They're going to give it to no, Sammy. No, no, wait, wait, hold up. Before you make your choice, I have to point. I don't know. I don't know if you watched all this on Raw yet. Sammy Zayn won the triple threat on SmackDown, so you know how usually how that works. I just want to point that out. Oh, okay. Uh, I still you know, say because if you win, if you win on the go home, you usually don't win on the on the fucking. Race. I still say Sami Zayn wins the. <laughs> the he's, he's, he's probably the top heel right now. Uh, and I, it's listen, and, 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 and if he and, lost on SmackDown, I would think so. But and it, 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 it's gonna make it that way to they have uh they do it because it's gonna slowly make a face turn for AJ, and where he's gonna start his run against Roman for their um. Their main event run because the, you know the the best the best thing about it is that he got heat, quote unquote, with Heyman. So that is true, and that works. So up next we have SmackDown Women's Championship. We have Bailey uh, de- defending her championship against Nikki Cross. Bailey wins, but um, I think um, you know no ba- Bailey just wins. Bailey wins. And I think Alexa Bliss comes out and in and, and finishes off the scraps. Yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like a good idea. Um, uh, WWE Championship is we have Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton in an ambulance match, and I have Randy Orton as your new WWE Champion. Um, he wins and throws Drew McIntyre into the ambulance with Listen, a punt kick. I will not be surprised if somewhere down the line we see Alexa Bliss and uh, Bray Wyatt have the belts for just a short run. Of course, I think that, I think that's what the, I think that's what they're planning. Yeah, but so that's 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 later on. But uh, who you got between McIntyre and Randy? Um, I think Randy's time to hold the belt now, get a little run, and then I think it's him and Edge at WrestleMania. I think it's Randy get a little run with the belt, uh, get him a little bit closer to that Ric Flair uh, um, record, and then when the crowd comes back, Drew McIntyre wins it back. Yes, uh, which by the way, who's closest to Ric Flair's record besides John Cena? Uh, Randy. You know they're gonna make Randy Orton tie with John Cena. They're gonna have a match at Mania, right? I that 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 would be fucking amazing. That would be cool as Win, shit. Winner winner breaks the record. Yeah, winner takes all. Um, and finally, well, that, that's kind of that's kind of that's kinda, you can't really do that because somebody's already gonna be coming in with the belt. So 
Randy because Randy's gonna catch up and John's gonna win. The only way that you could do that, it'll be it'll end up being it'll be like a fatal four way or triple threat match where neither one has the belt and they're both tied at sixteen and somebody else has the belt. But 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 Red, if Randy even if Randy wins the belt on Sunday, he's not tied with John. I know, I know, no, no, no. I know what you're saying, but it has to be a build up to where whoever you figure is gonna break it. The belt has to either be vacant or it's they're in a triple threat match or fatal four way match to win the belt. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, finally, Universal Championship: Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso, Blood versus Blood, Us versus Us. This is going to be a Roman Reigns ricochet kind of situation. The, the story's phenomenal. Uh, it's my favorite thing on TV right now, but. Um, Roman Reigns is going to win by cheap, by dirty tactics, and he's going to squash this motherfucker. That's how a heel should do it. I like I said, main event style. Love Jay, uh, great, great wrestler. But if you're going to put somebody over, and especially a Roman like this, you got to put him in on on, on a super squash. You can't. You got to give him the Kofi King, Kingston treatment for real. Yep, and, and I think eventually once the brother gets healed up, they'll be joining Roman Reigns in a Samoan faction. Either that, or it'll just be a um, small, small um, angle, small program, to where they'll have heat with the family until family finally just says, "Fuck it." We, 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 blood is blood is bigger than the than the um the than, the, than the notoriety than the belt. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our predictions for um, Class of Champions Gold Rush and. Uh, Make sure to check back, listen back, and see if we got them right. What a horrible name. <laughs> I know. Well, you know what Vince is doing now. Every single pay-per-view has to have a catchphrase. So, uh, unfortunately, that's the one we were given. So, let's go to Monday Night Raw. The show opened with Retribution in the ring. and they um, Retribution! We already, listen, if you're expecting to go, us to go on a rant here, it's called Cutting a Promo. Um, just rewind it. We'll, we already gave the whole down low on this. But basically... Dijakovic, Shane Thorne, Dio Madden, Martinez, and Mia Yim came to come out, cut a promo saying they have had been given WWE contracts, which makes zero sense because I'm sorry if someone's ruining my business, I'm not going to sign them as an employee. It doesn't have it. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. And now they're able to do anything they want and would tear down WWE. Which side note, Red, what pisses me off is the whole gimmick is not that is that now that they're signed, they can do whatever they want. Um, that's not how that works, buddy. If I go and call shit at my job, I'm going to get fired or suspended. Well, did you hear what T-Bar said on his Twitter? T-Bar, no. T-Bar had mentioned the reason why that they got the contracts was because they were worth more as contracted wrestlers than non because they were causing so much havoc and, and, dest- and destroying so much property. So it's better to have you on contract and not destroy the place than to be uncontracted and just be, whatever. But at the end of the day, that's why that's why uh, that's what their contract. That, that's what it is. But even they Jerry, but but it was still Jerry, said it was still said that they will still destroy the WWE from inside. Jerry the King Lawler on commentary even said he was dead on. He was like, "Why are they signed again? <laughs> How did that happen?" And they never told you because it doesn't make any sense. Right. Um. Literally, that's like me owning a comic book shop and someone keeps wrecking my comics and I'm like, dude, you want to work for me? Listen, listen, I'll give you, I'll give you a job if you just stop ripping up the comics. Yeah, like really, um, really bad sell. That's a worse sell than um, and fucking um, uh, whatever, anything. I was, right, wa- so, I was waiting for you to come up with an analogy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, too, too long day. Fuck that shit. Whatever. Um. Her business come out and um, they go at each other. Retribution um, pussy out and they walk away, which leads to a match later on in the night. Um, also on Raw, Angel Garza and Andrade defeated Rollins and Murphy and Dominic Mysterio and Humberto Carrillo in a triple threat tag match to become the number one contenders this Sunday. Um, Rollins walked away and let Murphy get destroyed like Simba in Lion King. And... Um, I'm not mad at Dominic and Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio and Umberto being a tag team, but it's kind of a little stereotypical. But whatever. Once again, you throw the two Mexicans in a team and say, "Make me money." I don't really think they cared. <laughs> I really I don't, don't think either. they cared. I'm just, I'm just pointing out the obvious. Yeah. I like them. I don't, I don't mind them as a team. I'm just pointing out the obvious. Um, after that, we have Kevin Owens hosting the the, the Kevin Owens show uh, with Shane McMahon promoting Braun Strowman and Dava Kato in Raw Underground. Uh, Kato came to the ring only to receive a slap from Owens. Um, Shane McMahon tells him to break up, and the match will be, the fight will be later on the show. 
Zelina Vega defeats Mickey James to become the number one contender uh, at Class of Champions. Once again, rushed, doesn't make any sense, and I think it's just a desperate pry for a different matchup with Asuka. If I was Asuka, I'd be pissed off with this women's division right now. It's 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 bad. Also on Raw, Apollo Crews defeated Cedric Alexander via pinfall. It was a roll-up. Of course, we had another fruit roll-up. And uh, Apollo Crews gets a win before his match with Lashley at Clash of Champions. Um, also on Raw, I was on Raw Underground this week for a good 10 minutes, and they cut oh. me off. So, Oh, okay. <laughs> Which, by the way, I want to give a quick side note a quick uh, before we continue the rest of Raw here. Um, I, uh, the rumors are true, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in Raw Underground... A producer mutes the fucking program to tell you shit if you're not doing things right. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Um, two things. Um, Oscar was making her entrance the first time around, and the music and audio stops, and you hear a producer go, "Ladies and gentlemen, for anyone using a phone, I ask you stop shaking your devices. Put it on it. Put it on a stand." And make sure it's solid because if you keep shaking, you will be kicked off the program. No, no, no. Thank you're saying you you're saying no. You're saying roll under. You're talking about the the Thunderdome. Sorry, Thunderdome. Yeah, I was like, what the My fuck bad. are you talking about? Uh, yeah, well, you confused me. Then. Yeah, he. By the fuck, whatever. He yelled at us. He yelled at us for not for for people using their phones for shaking it too much. And he was like, if your phone continues to shake in five minutes, we'll be kicking you off the broadcast. Thank you. That's the first time I heard him say something. Oh, okay. That, and then when Asuka goes into the ring and makes her taunt with the with the pyro, the music mutes again, and he goes, "Why is nobody cheering for Asuka? Show her how you feel. Tell her how you feel. Get loud." And I instantly did this. <laughs> fuck yourself. Middle finger up and everything. Fuck and you. They're getting desperate uh, now. They're joking. getting desperate now because they're actually reaching out to people via email asking you to be part of it. They're yeah. It, I actually have a spot for Clash of Champions. So uh, oh, you do? Oh, okay. Uh, they, they, do have a spot for Clash. they emailed me for Raw, and I was like, I- I'm actually off that night, but I'm like, do I really want to do I-, I don't think I care anymore. <laughs> I don't think I give a you shit. Should, like, you should just go on with like a fucking stupid outfit and just fucking make a joke of it. I know, right? So also on Raw, we had Nia Jackson and Shayna Baszler defeating Lana and Natalia. I'm not speaking about that train wreck. Um, I'm sorry, but Lana and Natalia is the worst thing on television right now, hands down. Uh, but the but, uh, but the best thing on, on social media is Natalia's sister. Let's just say that. Jenny. Natalia's sister's hot. And also another <laughs> side note, um, once again, Lana gets pushed through a table because of Miro's comments. I'm telling you. Tell I don't care what nobody tells me. That girl is getting the business end of a fucking bitter and petty company. And she just signed the fucking contract extension. So imagine her. Imagine every week her going through a table. Yeah, because she's not an it. idiot. Because she already knows what they're doing with Miro, with fucking Miro at AEW. And she's like, oh, jeez, that looks like a train wreck. I'm fucked everywhere. I might as well go to Impact. Um, Oscar defeated Peyton Royce via disqualification. Um, Delina Vega attacked her during the match. Um, whatever. Um, quick bullshit. Quick interaction between the two. Vega ran in an attack a few minutes into the match, telling Asuka it's her time. Um, on Raw Underground this week, we had a few um, a few matches. We had Dolph Ziggler defeating Arturo Ruas, which I think Arturo Ruas is a fucking star, in my opinion. I think he looks like... Him and Cesaro would be the best tag team in the fucking planet. Um, he choked out Arturo with a rear naked choke. We had uh, Riddick Moss defeating Eric via TKO. We expect Eric to be on Raw Underground a lot due to Ivar having successful neck surgery. And uh, on the, on Raw Underground was Braun Strowman defeating Daba Kato via TKO in the worst Raw Underground match I've ever seen. I've seen so far. It was, <laughs> it, was bo- it was boring. It was slow. It was a slow match, and it was only four minutes. It um, Strowman literally squashed Kato. It was a fucking. Dis- it was it was lame. It was fucking boring. They hyped it up like a monster mash and it ended up being a diarrhea. Um, so that happened. That, that And that ends Raw Underground. And then we have um, Seth Rollins invited the Mysterio family to join him as he revealed some um, important information. Rollins claimed to have a DNA test, which, by the way, I don't know how you could do that without someone else's DNA. What did he do? Like, have a paper... What did he do? Have a fucking Ziploc bag in his last oh, match? Oh, God. I go to, like, a creep factor that he went into the bathroom after she had a fucking... Time of the month and took her fucking pad or some shit like that. Uh, yeah, that that's how the, dark that the, I get. <laughs> you can only imagine what the that Messiah did to get that DNA. Exactly. Uh, and um, it proved that Ray. Huh. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> um, man, that's what I think about this whole show, uh, about this fucking raw bullshit. Uh, he revealed that Ray was not Dominic's father. Um, saying that Ray saying, "Are we going through this again, yo? Come on, yo. We been we did this in two thousand and five. Come on, yo." And um, but then he says, "No, no, it's not just Dominic. Aaliyah is not your your daughter." He then aired footage of Aaliyah checking on Murphy and Rollins attacking him last week on Raw. Ray told Rollins to leave his daughter out of things because she's just a nineteen year old. Which, by the way, she's hot. Um, <laughs> I, I was I waiting for you to say that. I'd bag that. I was waiting for you to um, say, oh, man, she's hot. She's 19, so it's like a little man. But, nah, um, hey, that, that, that's in your wheelhouse. You're good. She's legal. I'm 22. Hit me up. Uh, and, <laughs> but, and she knows. And Ray said that she knows nothing about the world, uh, which caused her to storm off. Murphy would then track Aaliyah down to apologize, of anything, uh, apologize for anything he did to her. Um, Aaliyah will be in the Rollins group in about a month and will be Murphy's on air boyfriend. Oh, uh, he's, uh, he just, uh, he just celebrated his 32 fucking year old birthday, man. He just turned 32. Oh, Lee, that's, yeah, well, that's, that's creepy. This is, this is, this is Vince's wet dream. If I can't do it at 70, oh, I'll my. pretend I'm you. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, yeah, that's double digits, bro. Like, yo, no. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Um, cause everyone thinks that Murphy's like in his mid twenties, like no fam, he's in his early thirties. Yeah. Um, two more things on Raw. And which, yeah, by the way, back. when is it, um, uh, 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 Ray's wife, can't she just go to, uh, really guys, y'all making me look like a fucking hoe over here. What y'all doing, bro? I, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I look like a real puta over here just like making it seem like I fucking cheat on my husband. What the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. They're, they're, they're giving him the, they're giving her the lamboshing. So, yeah. You know? You can only imagine how she feels about this whole storyline. Basically making her look like a cum dumpster. I can say, here I go. <laughs> I can hear her go, Otra vez con este mierda, coño. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fucking puta again. Otra que dura mía. I'm a fucking puta. Um, the two final things on Monday Night Raw before we go to um, AEW, which will be covered by mainly Red. I mean, I didn't watch it. So, I mean, I have the notes, but we'll figure it out. Um, Drew McIntyre enters Raw without any idea of who he would defend the championship against at Sunday's Class of Champions. Uh, McIntyre was set to fe- face McIntyre faced Keith Lee on Raw, but it ended in a DQ again. Uh, uh, again. Um, if Lee won this match, he would be um, facing Randy Orton if he was not cleared to compete. Which, by the way, that's stupid. It should have been if he won, he was added and it was a triple threat. Right. Um, hey, if you win, you're the backup. It's like, really? Okay. I'm not really winning shit then, all right. Um, Orton actually attacks uh, McIntyre from behind and makes a surprise return, saying that he's fully cleared, he's ready for his Sunday's title match, and that he never in his career has passed up a championship match. Bullshit. Um, and, you know, that's how the match ended there with Randy Orton on top. And finally, we had Retribution versus the Hurt Business and um, a, la- a, laz- a, la- a la- how you say, lazadaisical? Lazadaisical. Lazadaisical bullshit match with T Bar, Mace, and f- fucking Slapjack. Which, by the way, Slapjack's videos are averaging three million on YouTube. That, Vince knew the, these terrible names would fucking get clout. Not good clout, but clout. Um, the, basically, no offense was done by any teams. They drew a disqualification by by because T Bar um, Dijakovic fucked up one of the Vince's secret rules. The match ended up in a DQ, and it was the WWE main roster on Raw versus Retribution to end the night. Red, what were your thoughts on Monday Night Raw and Retribution's first week as Retribution? <laughs> Please. That shit is a fucking train wreck, man. <laughs> Jesus. Explain why this was the worst Raw you've seen ever. Like, you, you gave it that title. You got to back that up. No, none, none of these storylines made any sense. You just took one of the hottest programs you had with the Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio story with Dominic into the shitter with now this fucking DNA shit the Hurt Locker which is the hottest thing going on the hottest faction and probably all across of wrestling right now you just made him fucking face which is corny as shit you, they look like money they look like what a fucking team should look like and you well, just I'm still hoping that, I'm still hoping their heels and they're just like pulling the we're defending our home turf that, that, but that shit is it, it, it doesn't make any sense it's stupid you had them invade the, the raw underground it was like oh okay that's cool now with this shit with retribution it's like no you could like we mentioned in cutting a promo you could have done so much more with that retribution angle than this shit it's dead rest in peace retribution right 
So let's go to AEW quickly as um just a quick recap of night late night dynamite. We had uh, Ben Carter versus Scorpio Sky, which um was phenomenal. I heard I heard only good things about that match. I actually saw a few clips from it, and people are predicting Ben Carter is going to be a star. He's gonna be there. He's gonna be their mixture of like a Will Ospreay or a Zack Sabre Jr. He's gonna have like that kind of a feel for them there. So he's he's good. Someone, he, he is good. Someone said. Someone says online, if AEW started off the shows like this rather than boring tag team matches, they would go so. They would oh actually God, be they don't even want to. Yeah, we'll wait till they get to that shit. Um, which by the way, a lot of people heard of Ben Carter the first time this week. I know him from GCW and from around the area here. He's been getting a few matches in. He, yeah. He's as good as people say he is. He's a star. Okay. But so is Scorpio Sky. Uh, they're both our stars. Um, Anna J um, beat Brandy Rhodes. I don't care about that. And finally, we had um, Sean Spears versus Matt Seidel. You watched that match? It's funny you said that Anna J and Brandy Rhodes because this was actually probably the first time in a long time that Brandy actually looked like she can work a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna call her fucking. Yeah, I'm not gonna call her fucking. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Beth Phoenix or fucking. Uh, 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 or fucking um, Rhea Ripley, but she she looked okay. It, it was all right. Which, by the way, I heard um, Jr. I think Jr. has a crush on Anna J because after the whole wardrobe malfunction comment this week, he said that she should win the Jezebel of the Year award. I don't know. I don't know if that's a gimmick. He has a crush on her, but I don't know what the fuck. Do it you is. even know what a Jezebel is? Like a queen or some shit like that. No. What the fuck's a Jezebel? A Jezebel it could be considered like a whore. Oh well, I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, they are <laughs> like, doing. like like Frankie just said, it's considered like a puta. It's a, it's a whore. I don't know what I don't know what Jr. is saying about this <laughs> bitch. But uh, last week wardrobe malfunction. This one Jezebel of the Year award. Look at here, you Jezebel. <laughs> Um, Jr's really coming out of his way for this. Bitch, I would love. Right? I would have yeah, loved that you went to your mother and just told her, "Hey, ma, you're such a Jezebel." She'd be like, "What?" Oh, I'm gonna say that shit today. I'm gonna say, "Yo, ma, you're a Jezebel, son." And be like, "What?" I thought it meant queen. Yeah, right. Um, and then finally, so, um, then finally, it's Sean Spears versus Matt Seidel, which I actually heard was a pretty good match. Was you a know, good match as that? well. Yeah, it was a good match as well. Why uh, is Late Night Dynamite better than Dynamite? What the fuck's going on? But, but you know what the funny thing, like. <sighs> Alex Marvez went and he asks after you know the the whole thing where, where uh, before before the match he he tells Matt Seidel Seidel about uh hey, you, you had a you had a great um introduction to AEW during um All Out and it's like why would you bring that up that's so fucking what it's like it's like telling a guy you know break a leg and he goes out there and fucking breaks a leg why why, yeah, why would right. why would you like, do that. <laughs> Why would, you, why would you want to keep bringing up the fact that the guy had a big fucking botch, uh, the biggest botch of the year on fucking national TV? What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, so that was Late Night Dynamite, and uh, let's go straight to Dynamite. Uh, Red, um, do you want to take over here? All right, the first match you have is the fucking tag team match, which started off with the introduction why of... They, why do they do that? Oh, my God. And, and, AW, can you stop starting off every week with tag team matches? You wonder why you're bland and boring. But here's you the other thing, why. too. But here's the other thing, too. It pisses me off when we go to talk about NXT, the same shit. It's, their counter-programming is fucking ridiculous. But in any case, we'll start with um, Kip Sabian comes out, has he gets an intro. It wasn't a, uh, a hot fucking intro because usually... You get those hot intros where you don't even get introductions. You just get these guys already starting to fucking wrestle. You get the you get the introduction with uh, Kip Saban and, and Penelope Ford coming in. Which, by the way, Penelope Ford, I, I keep looking. I'm like, damn, she is kind of hot. She is hot. She's. I think she's the hottest woman in that division. I mean, shit, yeah, she is good looking. So, um, hell yeah. Uh, we got Penelope Ford, Kip Saban. They introduce Miro, who they're going up against uh, Joey Janela and Sunny Kiss. Which can I make a side point on that? Yeah, Look, I get that. I get. I get that you want your big new signing to have an impressive debut, but feeding him and Kip Sabian a team that for the past couple of weeks you're trying to build as odd duck contenders. No, 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 no. no. This is what it should have been. You don't feed your monster. Which, by the way, he looks phenomenal. He looks great. He looks like fucking Juggernaut from from. I love fucking, his gear from the X Men. He looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Why would you put him in an opening tag team match? Why would you do that? What you do, Kip Sabian should have said, I'm not doing this match. You guys are going to fight in a two-on-one gauntlet and let him destroy one, each of them one at a time. That's how you would put this fucking guy over. Yep. 
You don't fucking put in a ten. This match was so all. Uh, it was all over the place. People on the, uh, on the internet. Well, you gotta understand. He hasn't been in the ring a while. There's ring rust. And, no, no. If you know that a guy's gonna have ring rust, you don't give him a tag match where he has to monitor and be on top of too many components going at one time. That's awful. What you do, you put him in a. If you wanted to, you should have fed him to, um, um, Joey Janela because Kip Sabian got a, a storyline with him because you know Joey used to date um, Penelope before. So just feed him to 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 fucking Miro, and that would. But no, there was spots after spots that was missed. Fucking tag. Sonny Kiss did a fucking. He got into the ring before he was even tagged. That, and that's how all over the place it was. It, it wasn't even supposed to be that way. I heard it was a train wreck. Oh my god! It, it fucking Kip Sabian landed on his fucking head in the con- uh, on a concrete floor. Which, it, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? People are comparing Kip Sabian and Roos and Miro, not talent wise, but story wise, to Shawn Michaels and Big Daddy Cool Diesel. N- nowhere near. No, it, this is nowhere. This is st- no, no, no. Sorry. Um, <laughs> p- please. Uh, That's what I'm seeing on the notes online. Ugh. Please, they, they they need to do their research a little bit more. They're saying they're saying not in terms of talent, but in terms of like story wise. No, it's not even fucking close. I I believe I agree. Um, he tweaked his ankle. Uh, he he tried. You know, he didn't really. He he didn't look like he was really that. But he 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 was working that ankle pretty serious on spots that he didn't need to work the ankle. It looked like it would have been something to where that they attacked the ankle afterwards, and they, you know, it, nah. It was one of those. It, it was a. It's a little burner that if you ever play sports, you get in your ankle. Like it's like, oh fuck, and then you know, you just you just get back on it. But you know, it, the wheel is a little fucking blown. So uh, they said in the back afterwards, it doesn't seem too bad. So he'll be all right. All right. Well, after that, we had um, Eddie Kingston coming out and uh, demands the hard cam, laying out why he's getting a title shot in Lance Archer's absence, um, which I I'm, I'm reading now. I think it's actually a really cool. Um, um, last minute product. Um, well, you had to. The majority I, I, of the fucking roster got fucking uh, not the majority, but a large, a, a large number of them got fucking COVID. The coronavirus. Yeah, that whole fucking um, that whole um, program for the next couple of weeks is thrown all over the place. Absolutely. So Eddie Kingston comes out and says that he, um, the two reasons why he deserves a shot is because he was never eliminated from the battle royal, which is funny, and also that he's put in eighteen damn years, and that's worth a shot in itself. But that and the fact he, he talks about, he well, I, 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 he talk, he goes into the fact that uh, him and Moxie are cut from the same, well, were cut from the same cloth, but Moxie sold out, went to went to the yo, sports we're, entertainment. Yo, we're the same news article. Yeah, went into the sports. I remember it. I remember because it it's a great book. When you, that's the one thing about promos, and we, we're probably gonna have to touch it again one time on cutting a promo. Uh, we're gonna have to do a cutting a promo about cutting a promo. Uh, when oh. when people cut. Good promos, great promos. You remember them; they're memorable. So, the, like Eddie goes in and he he he's he's fucking he's untouched in that in that in that in that company. He probably cuts a better promo than most of them in the top three. He's fucking up there with MJF. Which I was thinking for the show that we would we would we would get we would get a worker who's like known for his promo work and come on and do uh, cutting a promo where he does like a promo seminar. Oh. Well, I've always been a fan of like, uh, you know, like, you know, like, like Hank is a friend of the show. I always want he does it. He he's he, he hasn't fucking no ills. He he, could, he he has balls. But we will find somebody. I would love to do that because promos are as important. They are very important. But like you said, they come from the same cloth, and that um, Kingston cut this promo before in the Indies. Um, but but here's the thing, um, ICW they fought at. Um, before all this happened, right. you know, when, when Moxley was young, Moxley, mm-hmm. uh, they were they were ICW in the Elks Lodge, which AEW posted a picture of them in the Elks Lodge, mm-hmm. uh, which was cool to see. Um, shout out to the Elks Lodge, I miss you, I miss you. Um, Moxley comes out. Wait, he he asks Moxley to come out, um, so he can look at him in the eyes. Which Eddie Kingston's hood shit, bro, that shit is awesome. I'm telling you, where he said, "Where are you, sports entertainer?" That shit is awesome. Look at Moxley me, bye. Look at me, bye. <laughs> which, which I'm sorry, Eddie Kingston is is awesome. Like uh, up and down the board. Like you hear this shit. This is awesome. This is a great sell for me. And, and like I said, for, every, real fight vibes here. So and um, uh, and outside of the ring, meeting the guy is fucking cool as fuck. I'm I'm I wish yeah. that we could have gotten for the show. Guy. Yeah. I met him at the I met him at the 5150 show. That dude was awesome. Yeah. He was only sitting right next to us during that whole entire show. Yeah. It was it was great. 
Uh, Hangman Page after this defeats Evil Uno. Red, what do you thought about that one? Uh, good match. I is that here? Hold on. Good match, but the the thing that bothers me is like I I can I, first of all Kenny Omega bothers me on commentary. It's annoying. It's fucking yeah, I don't annoying. Like Kenny Omega's voice. And this was actually a match that um, Evil Uno actually looked decent. That he worked. He actually looked good in well, the match. Ben is in the building. Hey Ben. What's up, Ben? All right, guys. All right, guys. Hey, my Ben. Those, my son's eating those cheese crunchies. No, these are munchies, chocolate fudge brownie flavor. Oh, oh damn! All right. we, we, we're gonna have to try that out. Fuck, man, gotta eat. <laughs> so, but, 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 but Red, you have to understand something. Evil Uno, um, is has the which I was told from multiple workers, Pinky Sanchez being one of them, that Evil Uno is highly respected in the indie world and. Even before this whole gimmick, he was, he was. A lot of people went to him for advice and to train. Right, right, right. But but just because, you, listen, I could be liked all over everywhere too. But don't mean I'm fucking good at what I do. I just respected. know. Respected. Yeah, not yeah, like that, this respect. Respe- okay, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm fucking good at what I do. I'm just people bro, respected and liked. Bro, bro, you're not different. hearing what I'm saying. He he was respected because of his in ring work. All I've saw, but to be honest, anytime I've seen him, is shit. I don't know. That's not what I was told. I, I was told that he was fucking highly respected for his work. Well, that we're just going to have to probably do... We're going to have to watch when they were, they were the Super Smash Brothers and all that shit to see if they were really good. Because I, I did a watch along with one of him and being in one of the matches, and I got four workers in the comments saying, go, oh, this dude was mad loved in the Indies. In the, in the, this dude is mad, had, The respect is real. This guy could work. I guess. I, I, like, I, I, I must have missed something. It, 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 might, it must be one of those traits that they'll tell me, oh, well, you never been in the ring. You never took a bump, so what the fuck you know? I have eyes. I can fucking see if something is good or not, shithead. Just because, just because I never played for a fucking professional football, can't I can't tell you that somebody doesn't know how to run a fucking route? Shit. Wow. So go. yeah. So who won that one? Uh, Ben did because apparently Ben also is going to be um Evil Uno for Halloween this year. Oh, perfect. I don't mind Evil Uno. I think he's uh, got better in the ring. I think this is one of his strongest performances. Yeah, this week, like I said, this week like I, said, I, I was I was I was impressed with him this week. He looked good. They also teased yeah. some kind of, um, uh, 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 they, they teased some kind of possible face turn for him during one of the programs. I, 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 I got, I forgot what match it was, but he was upset that someone got involved in a, I think it was with the, um, the Brandy Rhodes match. And it was, it was fucking weird doing a, um, AW dark late after dark, whatever the fuck. I don't know. It's, it was it was weird. Uh, I don't know what they're doing on that on that one. Any case, uh, for uh, Hangman and um and 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 Evil Uno was really good. I just like I said, I'm just annoyed with Kenny on fucking commentary. And he just bothers me. Um, after that, we had Tony Schiavone uh, backstage looking to talk to the Young Bucks. Um, Matt Jackson joins him and doesn't know the names of any of the people he and Nick have super kicked, but he apologizes for their attitude and promises to be better. Tony asks a few questions about FTR, and that makes Matt angry enough to smash Tony's phone. So are we getting a bipolar young young bucks here? Like, no, you get a fucking young bucks that nobody can believe that they don't know who the fuck they're talking about or what's going on. You're fucking. Think this is the most interesting young bucks have been. Yeah, uh, really? Hey, little bit, what's going on? What's up? Hi. Hi. Uh, what's up? We, we, wait, wait. Well, a little bit has something to say about the young bucks. What was it that you said before about the young bucks that we said that they they um. They, they're they're punchable. <laughs> what is it? They like want to be gangsters. They like you just want to like kick them in the face and steal their lunch money. Like I, I don't That's know. True. They're, 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 <laughs> like they can't even. They say they try so hard to be douchebags. Yeah, they're, they're being. Um, they're ooh, look at Bell with the hoodie up. Uh, you no, know, the young bucks. Uh, they're trying to be bad and evil, and it's like you won't steal a piece of candy from CVS. Um. <laughs> Um, um, <laughs> it's like they're like that guy that will threaten you on Facebook, but then when they see you in real life, they walk past you because they know that's, they ain't got shit. Ben's that's that me. guy. Ben's that guy. Um, that's me. Uh, hi, hi, Ben. Uh, Hello. Up next, we got um, the TNT Championship, which is Brody Lee defeating Orange Cassidy. And after the match, we get a return of Robbie Rotten from Lazy Town. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, uh, with hair darker than. Wow, he told he told the he told the barber to bleach, bleach to, to to dye dye his hair, not 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 just dye it, dye dye his hair. That's he looked like he looked like that uncle that showed up at a funeral <laughs> with his new girlfriend, 
and it was like, wait a minute, she's like twenty years younger, and he's the, he's got the fucking the the the, the Grecian going on and shit, and it's like the yeah, extra die. Yeah, I mean, listen. Everyone, everyone wanted a uh, dark-haired Cody back, and I'm like Robbie Rotten. I thought, Who's people... everyone? Who? Who? <laughs> well, a lot of people in the groups were like, "No, I don't like him blonde." I'm like, if you care about his hair color, you're a mook. No, he was. Uh, he's the he's the best one. He he went into the fucking barber shop and was like, "Yo, what you want?" And he goes, "Uh, can you let me? Can I look like a black pair of Air Force Ones? I got you, fam. I, I got, got you, fam. Yo, I, I want I want to look like Robbie Rotten. Doesn't matter Rotten. what color her hair there is. Yo, what you want? What you want, son? Yo, lazy town. I got you, bro. Yeah, I was just kind of like, um, I don't know. Not to say I don't care about the color. I was just kind of put off on it. Uh, Red, what were you, I mean, what were your thoughts on Cody's? Um, I, like I said, I couldn't watch. My TV didn't have that shit. So how? What was uh, round table? What was Cody? What was your What was your opinion of Cody coming back? I'll pass it to Ben first. Ben, what was your thoughts about him coming back? Why? Why is he coming back? He's only been gone a few weeks. It's the game show. The, the game show he's doing is done recording. It just makes uh, Brody Lee's beatdown on him not look that impressive now. And I'm not one for, I'm not asked about hair and all that shit, but I prefer his hair blonde. It, it just looks shit like that. And you can tell it's dyed because there's a fucking red tinge in it. And I was just like, that's a poor fucking dye job. Coming from a guy <laughs> who's got shit hair in town. Um, I, I didn't like it. I just don't see the point. <laughs> We don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need Cody for a bit. So I don't understand why he's back so soon. Nicole, what's your thoughts about Cody's return? I mean, that's the same thing as Ben. You saw, like, when he turned his head, he had, like, red spots on it. <laughs> but I think I even commented on, like, the AEW page. They're like, oh, Cody's return. Oh, Cody with dark hair. And I was like, yeah, too bad he didn't wash that thing off his neck, though. Yeah, exactly. That's it still around. Ben, ben likes the, the, the neck tattoo, though. I actually do, and uh, I like the fact that Brody Lee fucking uh, ripped it as well, which is quite funny. It's grown on me, but it's still not the best. No, it looks like it's growing on him. There's a difference. It looks like it's bigger every time I see him. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, true. it's obviously getting, getting someone, older. Press, someone, someone, someone's zooming in on their phone on the fucking tattoo. <laughs> um, so up next we have... Um, right? That's what it looks like. Somebody's zooming in on Doing this. this. <laughs> like zooming in. Um, He's doing side cags on a radio show, ain't this some shit? I know, right? <laughs> uh, up next, we have Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa defeating Eva Lee and Diamante. Anything to talk about, guys? Shout out to Thunder Rosa for giving paying homage to a uh, Roll Warrior Animal with the face paint. That was no. cool. I saw that gear. That was cool. That was cool. Um, better match than it was uh, last week with the uh, the fucking shoot style fighting. Um, but they still looked like there was some stiff fucking shots thrown in during that match, man. Fucking uh, Eva Lee and and and. Uh, uh, Carl Sheeta fucking had a had an exchange where fucking Eva Lee knocked the shit out of her with a fucking knee. I was like, damn. But um, all in all, it, it it was a better match. I mean, I could have probably waited on this match, but since like I said, since what's going on with AEW, they had to put matches together. I think this was something that um they did they, 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 it was okay with him. Okay, so up next we had um. Chris um, Chris Jericho um, accepts Isaiah Cassidy's challenge. We'll see the House of Glory home run homegrown boy facing Chris Jericho next week. Oh MJ steps MJ steps in the frame. We'll talk. About, I'll give you your opinion in one minute. MJ oh. steps in the frame and says that he can't believe Cassidy would just challenge him. Uh, they do the compliment sandwich again with each other, and um, and then they call each other a loser again. Um, whatever it is. Uh, I guess they were just chewing up the clock while Mox and Kingston were backstage. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I guess our boy Jose Cassidy has a match against Jericho. Jesus, right? you don't even you, you you now we know why why they don't speak or why they shouldn't speak. Oh my God, put some bass in their voice. <laughs> my God, there was no promo class at House of Glory, bro. There was no promo class at House of Glory. They didn't bro. have to cut them. They should have done. They 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 they, they should have practiced during on videos and shit. Cause my lord, uh, it. People talk about staged, contrite, written kind of stuff in, in WWE. My God. This was just... Oof. Uh. <laughs> this is, yeah. they, should, they take this a promo class and they go, you see that? Yeah, you do the opposite of that. You do. You make sure you do the opposite of that. You see what he did right there? Yes, you don't do that. You that is. That. I, um, I, pay, I have, have psych patients who cut better promos on me than <laughs> that shit. Yo, for real. Uh, and finally, it was AEW World Championship match. The main event, we had John Moxley defeating Eddie Kingston. Um, I heard it was a dog fight. And oh. all I have to say about this main event was 
2020, and regardless of how the match went, Ben, because I didn't watch it, Eddie Kingston is a, is a championship threat in 2020. I think we all deserve that at one time in our lives. Uh, what a time to be alive that Eddie Kingston is in a championship match on national television in 2020. That's all I have to say. You guys could take the stage there because I didn't watch it. I couldn't. Ben, what's your thought? I wasn't shaking my head because I was disappointed. I was shaking my head because it was fucking brutal. Those chops that fucking John Moxley took, his chest was fucking red like a beetroot after about five of them. It was a fucking horrible match, as in brutally horrible. I fucking loved it. It was a shit. It, it was a it was a trench fight. A little it bit. Was just a little bit. Are you into real. these kind of matches when two beefy men are throwing at each other, chops and just uh, an arsenal of weaponry and, st- and such? What? Are you- <laughs> He acted like two sweaty is. men. He acted to be like two sweaty men going rough on each other. Do you like? Do you like? Bra- do you like brawling men? Yes. I mean, and not in Eddie Kingston's attire. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't like my. I don't. I don't like my men in leotards. <laughs> <laughs> not a leotard fan. What? Hashtag all what? leotards matter. No. Um. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, they don't. For right, pa, black right, leotards matter. Pa, yo pa, yo pa. For um. For what they had to throw together last minute, because apparently that was done maybe like two or three, uh, not even probably like two days prior. Um, I I could say that yes, they took whatever they did in the Indies and said fuck it, let's just bring it here. But I can say that as brutal as Ben said it was, I thought that it could have been even bigger, brutally, honestly. It could have. Well, I don't think there, I don't think this is the last match, right? I think there's I think they're saving a little bit in the Arsenal. I know, but when you guys because the um, archery came in contact with COVID. That's why they had to do yeah, that, right? Yeah, he got COVID. Which, by the way, did you hear how you got, like, that even his dog might have COVID? Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah. Why is he fucking his dog? He's fucking COVID. his dog. Not, I, I, guess. I hope not. If that's what you like. I mean, yeah, don't little bit you. Show, but... I don't know what he's doing over there. I'm pretty sure my dog has COVID. <laughs> Desperate. That's Desperate times. COVID yeah, does some fucked up shit. Listen, the dry spell had to come off someday. Little um, bit is only saying that because her, fucking, her, her dog is from like an Asian country and shit. Oh, oh God. God. He's Korean. Korean. The he's, Korean dog. He's dude. Korean. And I'm pretty sure he's eating his tail right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great meal. Um, so that was AEW Dynamite. Oh, by the way, no, 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 no. We don't finish with that. Mm-mm. Because AEW finished, as much as that match was, was hella good, the finish was trash. Because then you get the run-in with uh, uh, um, everybody and their mother throw, throwing a... Uh, yeah, you had the... the Penta, yeah, Phoenix. Everybody looked like they were missing their spots during that fucking finish. Will Hobbs, well, Will Hobbs came in. He looked good, but still I like Will Hobbs. missed again. Finally, Darby Allen runs in with a skateboard. Take that fucking skateboard and shove it up somebody's ass. Not fucking <laughs> swing that shit like a puss. Swing that motherfucker. Well, I think I think the only problem that I have with this is like if I had a dollar for every time Darby Allen ended the show with, with you know, a running on his skateboard, I'd be a millionaire. No, 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 but but that's fine. And I even enjoyed the fact that they didn't get over the fact that Ricky Starks came in and was choking the shit out of. I'm fine with that, but it looked like a whole clusterfuck of nonsense. It finished badly. There was there should have been a better way for that. So to me, it's almost like they didn't have a finish and just said, "Go out there, go out there, go, 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 go." go. Yeah, of course so they did. that's the that's the Tony Khan way, finishing last minute on a whim. Yeah, indie bullshit. I mean- I mean that sounds like my sex life, but I mean the only <laughs> the only positives about it was Will. At least you have one. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Um, Will Hobbs' spine buster was good. Uh, I like Ricky Stark's spear. That was good. Um, and they've changed Pen- Pentagon's name now, haven't they? To Penta L zero M. They've changed it. Well, he can't officially. use it. He can't use it legally anymore because I think CML. No. I think CMLL owns it or some shit like that. So now he's Penta Cero M. Oh, that's but I, I must, I must, I did quite like the the ending to the fight itself because it didn't make Eddie Kingston look weak either. You were, you was okay with out. the yeah you you was you was okay with the submission choke out. Yeah, because he didn't he didn't tap out, did he? So you know, it still made him. Look, and I like how he sold it as well when after the fight he was sort of like walking around the ring all dazed and shit. So right. it was all right. Ben, Ben, you know what my favorite part of AEW was this week? Your beard, uh, Sonic. Sonny Kiss wearing really tight pants. Your beard. 
And your beard, your beard is your your beard is made of champions, sir. Sunny, yeah, Sunny just, Kiss alone. I don't know. Sunny Kiss is making fucking men question their fucking sexuality a bit. It's like, oh wait, well, wait J- you guys J- can help me. Uh huh. I mean, what is Sunny's pronoun? Uh, it, male. Sunny identifies as a male. Because they were all on, on Wednesday. They were. I was. I was messaging my other chat, whatever, and I was and. Uh, was it again? Uh, Jim Ross kept saying she, and Shivani kept yes. saying he, and I was getting yes. very confused. No, no, it's and bold. I and then just the it's bold. I spoke to I spoke to Sonny Kiss at VXS, and he said that he doesn't. He JR's do saying the right pronoun. It's, yeah, it's it, like he doesn't care. But 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 Matt, but we, okay. we, we, we know Sonny. Sonny really identifies as just a male. He just goes with the fucking I gimmick. Know, I know, but Sonny, but Sonny said that like he doesn't he care. Goes, he kind he doesn't there, care. There, there is no gender pronoun. Jim Ross is not fucking anything up. He yeah. said no. No, yes, he is. Like, so, so, no, yes, no, he is. No, he's not. No, he's not. He caught no. He called Miro's finisher the accolade, so he did fuck up. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, I'm talking about the pronoun. He fucked up everything Sunny, else. Sunny, he's Sunny gonna Kiss call said, Rusev one day. I'm waiting for it. Sunny Kiss, <laughs> Sunny Kiss told us that Jr. is doing absolutely nothing wrong, and that the pronouns are um, they're both the, oh, the whole commentary team is like. He kind of he kind of told us in a way where it's like Jr's taking one of the pronouns and using that, and then Shivani's using the other pronoun. Like I don't think Sonny has a preference. Okay. Nah, nah, that that so, that believe sounds. Me, I believe me, believe me. I was pissed too, and then but then I heard the feedback from the man himself. So. No, that sounds that that sounds weird. That that is, that that sounds. It's, but it's, it's, it's the man himself, not the girl herself. No. But it's just, yeah, but it's right. just like it's just oh. like Nicole is saying. It's fucking confusing. On, Jesus, we could be on this all night. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. So, but let's go to NXT quickly as we started off with the women's battle royal to crown a new number one contender. WWE is known for one thing battle royals and shitty championship number one contenders. Um, I heard it was a fun match, but um, with Casey Kakad and Zaro with her creative elimination saves as usual, uh, Raquel and Rhea eliminated each other, which was the big boys in the in the, in the ring, and then um, fight. I think. Um, Candice LeRae won, so we'll be, we'll be getting Candice and um, EO at NXT TakeOver. What do you guys think about that? I hate the counter-programming. Fuck Candice LeRae. I hate the counter-programming. <laughs> I, I hate it. I would. Why would you? Would. Why would you put a women's match against a fucking... A, 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 why do they keep putting women's matches first on NXT's fucking shows? I don't get this. Because, because NXT does women and AEW does tag team matches. They have their fucking their, their favorite thing to start the show. And it yeah, but more. that's not. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm listen. I'm sorry, <sighs> and people could debate me all they want about it. I don't care. Listen, women's matches do not start any, anything. I'm sorry, anything woman related in sports or anything. It's not a kicker. First of all, it's not. You can't do this. You can say I'm sexist or, or, or whatever. It's not happening. Yeah. You're you not give, sexist. You're honest. Listen, I think that um, Damian Priest and Austin Theory should open the show. In in, in, in fucking in sports, you can have Game 7 of the WNBA... Fuck, oh, Game 5, because that's the final. Game 5 of a WNBA game, of a series of a finals versus the start of the regular season of the NBA. More people are going to watch the fucking NBA before that. It's it's just the oh. nature of the beast. Oh. Tony, Tony might differ. In I know, right? <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, they they, need, they could have put this as a second match. They did not have to have this as the curtain jerker. They, it wasn't necessary. They had to get it out of the way because they didn't want people shutting it off after Candice LeRae won. But you <laughs> actually had better matches that you could have kicked it off with, which would get down to it. Go ahead, Matt. What else you had? So after Candice LeRae won, um, I'm getting notes here that – hold on a second. It says here that um, after uh, Tegan Knox supposedly tore her ACL, what happened there? It, it, oh, Larray beat the crap out of her before the match. Ah, uh, so she couldn't be in the match. Ah, well, that would be because uh, she fucked up family dinner the week before or something. Oh yeah, they fucked up the Bachelorette or something like that. Uh, the Chrisleys, and then Tegan Knox is supposedly hurt. Ah, uh, that'll be a story down the road. Uh, up next, we have Jake Atlas versus Tommaso Ciampa in the Takeoff to Takeover match. Um. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa ended up winning. Not a surprise there. Um, he um, stopped the pin after his finisher to deliver the fairy tale ending. But what do you thought? I'm not going to ask about Ciampa. What do you guys think about um, Jake Atlas? Is he finding his place on NXT? Ben, um, I quite like Jake Atlas. I think it's uh, that putting him against Ciampa is a good way of getting him over, even if he loses. Because obviously, no one's expecting Jake Atlas to. To lose, um, so I, I don't mind him. His finish is okay, but it's got the possibility to be fucked up five times out of ten. But he's all right. He doesn't do not, doesn't do too much for me. But 
he's okay, I guess. Just got to see how he goes. Nicole, I never yeah. asked you, do you like Tommaso Ciampa? Do I like Ciampa? Yeah, yeah, no, I love Ciampa. No, a no, little bit. You like Tommaso Ciampa? He's all right. <laughs> Great commentary by Little Bit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Fantastic. I, mean, I mean, what do you want me to say? They're not really doing much with him right now. I was a fan before he went out. Uh, that, I, to, to me, Champa will be a star anywhere he goes. I mean, he has, but he has potential at, all the time. I think he's, I think he's getting his tune-up matches back from his injury or whatever it is. Um, actually, from being off for a while. I think that they're trying to find him a place, but he'll get there. Yeah, I feel like once he'll he finds there. a place, like I'll be hyped to watch him again. Yeah, right yeah now, he'll get there. He'll get there. He's kind of a filler guy right now. I do he's like. Okay, everyone has a role. Yeah, the entrance. The, the, the entrance says a lot. Yes, I I, I do fucks with the entrance. Of course, that's that's that's, that's, that's back to evolve days with that mask. Um, so up next, also on NXT this week we have Damian Priest defeating Austin Theory, which oh I love Austin Theory. The dude's a star. I think now Priest, you're gonna him. now you're gonna ask they me so what should have been a curtain jerker. That fucking match should have opened up the show. That's what I said. That fucking match should have opened up the show. I don't think they want him coming out first because people are booing the shit out of Austin Theory. <laughs> yeah, but you know he's what? He's a heel. But he's you know what? The guy is. Yeah, but are, is, are they booing him because he's a heel? Or are they booing him because do they are they not okay with the fact that he's back too? Nobody, nobody, nobody. But they can't. Uh, be, they couldn't boo shit anyway because I mean, there was. I don't know. They can't boo shit anyway because there was nobody in the fucking shit. studio. There was nobody in the, in the in the arena that day. Everybody got COVID. They, have, they still have the commentary with the stupid screens and dumbass yeah. shit that they do with the Thunderdome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's no NXT in Thunderdome. No, no, she's kidding. <laughs> no, but you heard. No. But you, they do. Listen. They do have the stupid audio track. That's the shit. They have the they audio do. track. Yeah. They have the fake. There is audio. They have the, the, they have the, the film. Up, the film fucking audio. Ben just gave us a cock shot. Thanks, Ben. I just had a piss, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> he For gave real, us the I missed that shit. Fucking on, cock man. shot. Look at that Brazzers, yo. My son has the Brazzers shirt on. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah, bra Brazzers, baby. <laughs> You're a real gem that you bought Brazzers merch. Well, What's I want to know how many guys bought that shit. <laughs> all right. Um, I, got it, I got it from Wish and it actually fits as well. <laughs> all right, man, there you go. I'm completed it, mate. Completed it. Um, Damian Priest wins the match. Um, after um, getting his ass kicked by Kushida last week, Theory took on the North American Championship. And, and yeah, supposedly they went to the limit. Her was a great match. Um, Fantastic. Talented, so I'm not surprised by that. Fucking, um, um, but for fucking Cornette compares him to a, a young Lance Storm, which is actually a really great comparison. That is a great comparison. And I think, uh, I listen, I think Austin Theory has the potential to be. Yeah, we've been, that, we, like, we, we talk about it already. You already gay for him. We know already, bro. We got it. No, not even. I'm not talking about Austin Theory. <laughs> Him. I'm talking about Damian Priest, and I'm talking about finally Kushida finding a proper place on NXT. Because Kushida has been lost in the woods for me. There's a chance for him to get over in a big way here with him in theory as a pro as a yeah. project. Mm -hmm. um, and possibly the most creative thing I've seen all week, we get Roderick Strong and Danny Birch defeating Fabian um, Eichner and Ro Mendoza. I, I don't know if you liked it or not, but I think um, it was creative because the winner of that match would... Um, uh, it was the brainchild of Fandango who used a British accent. That shit was accent. hysterical. It was great. But but um, now um, Undisputed Era and Lorcan and Birch, which by the way, they need a name, um, will face each other to earn the right to face Brizongo. I thought it was a very good match. And I also, and as positive as it sounds, I thought it was a great idea. What do you thought? I thought pretty much the reason why they did this match was last minute because you probably think that fucking... Or, um... Um, Orkin and fucking Bobby Fish probably got COVID. Probably, but even uh, so, they, 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 I thought it, I thought it, I thought it was creative. All I kept thinking was uh, was hearing a little bit just go. How much fish can Bobby Fish fry? Because Bobby Fish fry a fish. So like, I, I, <laughs> how much fish can Bobby Fish fry? Bobby Fish could fry fish. That's all I kept thinking about <laughs> when, when this happened. I was like, oh, poor Bobby Fish. Could he could fish fry? The song, fry. Of, the, the song of the decade, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Matt Riddle, thank you for that. Um, after that match, we had Rich Hong, which. I don't know if I'm being positive on NXT this week, but Rich Holland is a fucking beast. Okay, that that dude is like Ben's wet dream. If uh, that's a night. fucking rugby player for you, that's a rugby player for you, not a fucking pussy ass American football player. That's a rugby player. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. wow! You're that guy doesn't to... wear armor. Tell he doesn't wear armor. Really kind of right though. <laughs> Rich Holland. Rich Holland has a showcase match where, like, holy shit, his headbutts could kill me. Uh, I think he's a star. He's gonna be a star in the future. I think he's a. I, I, I know a positive Matthew on NXT. Wow, I can imagine. 
But the dude is an absolute fucking freak of nature. He's what Lars Sullivan wanted to be. Yeah. But he couldn't. Yeah. It's almost looking like uh, that. Yeah. The gay porn? Yeah, besides the gay porn. Everything but the gay porn, uh, which I know Ben has watched multiple times. He told me, confirmed. Um, and, and today. 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 Um, an hour ago. And, and finally, on NXT, we had um, new blood in the NXT title scene. We had uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Bronson Reed, um, Cameron Grimes, and um, I think it was Timothy Thatcher in a, in a gauntlet yeah. uh, elimination match, or whatever you want to call it. At the end, Kyle O'Reilly picks up the victory, which nobody expected. Um, I know I didn't. Um, giving a new member of Undisputed Era some love, which I don't know if this is them sucking his beef because they don't want him to leave, or this is just a different um, different in, um, flavor for the NXT audience. But Kyle O'Reilly is the new one, number one contender and will be facing Finn Balor at TakeOver. So to close off NXT Roundtable, what do you guys think of Kyle O'Reilly getting this opportunity? Because I think it's shocking, and I think it's a, a breath of fresh air. No, listen, the best part about that match was it was even the closer because his his um his conversation with with Cameron Grimes is actually fucking spectacular. Grimes is another guy that's on that roster that's a fucking star. Um, he is. He is. The, He's a true heel. The concept was basically a Royal Rumble gauntlet style shit where you don't go over the top, you just get pinned and submit it. But for it, right, for it to be the first run, it wasn't bad. It just seemed like, I don't know, I it's, to me something Rush. was missing. Yeah, something was missing with it. Um... But this is a perfect setup for what needs to be probably uh, probably a, a match of the year competitor between Kyle O'Reilly and fucking Finn Balor. That, 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 that actually could be a major fucking match. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I agree. I, I hope that. he could make it and stay fucking um, stay COVID free because, you know, he's got his immunity issues as well. So. Yeah, which but which I don't think anyone I don't think I don't think everyone understands that even Kyle O'Reilly even being on NXT right now is a huge risk. And it's and it's 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 definitely appreciated. The dude, you know, has past health problems, and he's and they gave him a number one contender match. Fucking good for him. I'm, I'm happy for him. A little bit. What's your bit? What's your thoughts about Finn Balor be uh, coming back and becoming the NXT champ? I mean, it it may, if they didn't give him the title, it was like no point. It's like you knew he was gonna get it the moment he came back, right? Because if not, it would defeat the whole purpose of him coming back. You got to give the man what he wants. You want to keep him. Finn Balor is a superstar, and uh, the comeback in NXT, like she said, like um, it, it it shows that NXT is not just a fucking demotion. It's a place to reinvent yourself and be happy. I'm pretty sure Finn Balor is getting a shitload of. I mean, it definition. was the main show, and sometimes I mean, I, I don't know if it still is. Sometimes I, mean, I don't think there is a main show right now. I feel like they all equally suck in certain aspects. True. Um, but I, I, I that Wednesday was the one that I watched. It was always I would make sure I watched on Wednesday, Monday, and Friday. Who cares? I think I only just watched SmackDown like this morning after I fell asleep. But which, NXT is the show. NXT is the show, but SmackDown was phenomenal this week, which I'll talk about in a minute. I did. I actually, wa- I did watch it. Ben, what's your thought? Wait, 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 before, before we go to SmackDown, uh, ben, 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 before ben, that, Ben, Ben, who do you think is the mystery person coming back to NXT? How do you know it's coming back? Because they said they've been gone for five years. Oh, someone's been gone for five years. They said they've been gone from NXT for five years and they're making their return. Bo Dallas. Wow. Fucking hell. Like, Kevin. Is, get it, ready, is get it someone? Ready, yo, ben, get ready to Bo leave, my friend. Bo Dallas is coming is back. It so, so it's someone so already on the Shut roster, up. man. All right, okay. Uh, I don't I don't know then because I don't even know who's been gone for that fucking long, to be fair. I would like it to be KO, but. I can't see that, to be fair. Let me ask you guys a question, because you guys saw the video better than me. Did the video package show a drone kind of thing, recording someone, or was that a security camera? It looked like a security camera more. People were saying it's Bo Dallas, and it's true. Um, I don't know what the fuck to think, but... Um, five years are gone. He's, I think he's been there, gone for five years. And if it's true, remember Bo Dallas had that drone with the Bo Leave gimmick. So, but he also, I remember he did, you know, he says he's coming back to take back what is his. And if you bring back Bo with a new fucking edgier look and not this hokey bullshit, remember the fucking guy was their champion. He could work. Like it's not like he's not a, he's, he's a he can work. Yeah. So it's in his bloodline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, look at the bloodline. I mean, it could work. Yeah. It could work, and I think Bo Dallas is underappreciated. Now that Curtis Axel was well, that Bo Leaves gimmick was shit. I'm sorry. If you, if oh, y'all come like it, that's on you. that whole thing was garbage. <laughs> I, no, I, I, doesn't I, believe. I, doesn't believe. 
I don't believe. I'm not a believer. I bought a bow leaf. I bought a. I actually bought a bow leaf shirt because I thought it was fucking hilarious. You did. I thought it was fucking hilarious. One year old, of course you did. <laughs> Once again, you know what? I'm out of here because I'm sick and tired of my age being represented in every fucking thing. You know, I'm out of here. Oh, Bo, leave, young man. He left because I called him 20. <laughs> I didn't call him 12. I called him 20. Oh. So, um. Oh. And, and, oh. oh. <laughs> but other than that, the whole buildup is, is, is leading up to NXT TakeOver 31. So. Um, Hi, I'm Matt. actually. Uh, ben, you left too? No, my fucking connection went. Oh, I thought you were like, I, I, I was like, wow, did I offend him by calling Matt his actual age this time? Yeah, I, was just... Matt, I called you 20. I didn't call you 12. I called you 20. Uh, he's lucky. He's lucky I haven't seen his mustache yet, so. <laughs> his, Is that why he faced His manly stash? I want to see that stash before, before this. Show I have no age, damn it. No, I'm kidding. Show me uh, the stash. Who? who? Whose mustache? Yours. Not mine, yours. <laughs> oh, my, uh, my Mr. Potato Head stash. <laughs> um, before we go to SmackDown, before we go to SmackDown, whoever watched Impact, give us a quick update on Impact this week. It was really, really good, as always. Um, Eric Young is a fucking great champion. He's an absolute beast. He kicked the fuck out of the Dinas. He twatted... Uh, well, him and Eddie Edwards got into a fight, and then at the end, someone blacked out and twatted Eddie Edwards, so we're going to see a new person. Katie Forbes got fucking pile driving. I got to say, she me. ate that fucking pile driver like a champ, though. Oh, yeah. She oh, yeah. ate that shit. When you, when you ask who the MVP is later, as much as I'm not a fan, Katie Forbes, any, any woman that takes that move, Fair play, and she, she took, it, really took well. it like a champ, and he threw the fuck out of her, of, 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 right, right off of him. Like, get the fuck off me! He fucked that yeah. shit up. Um, uh, but impact was impact was solid again for me, as as it is every week. Some good promos. EC3's promo was good. Eric Young's promo was good. We got um, we're gonna get Good Brothers versus um, the Rascals, which is gonna be fucking quality. And North against Ace Austin and Madman Fulton is gonna be good. It's just solid all, all in all. There's some shit bits, obviously, but come on, home. Good. Are they still doing Eric Young. House? No, no, anymore. no, no. They're not doing Wrestle House anymore. No. Eric Young is champion. Very, very good. Very impressive. I think his his character is is good. The WWE fucked up on him, really, in my opinion. Red, anything to add before we go to SmackDown? No, pretty much is where it's um. I, oh, by the way, uh, breaking news. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, might be showing up on Impact for the Hall of Fame induction of Ken Shamrock. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll be fucking I, hilarious. A vignette for uh, Heath Slater was really, really funny. Oh, when well, he got David, David Hasselhoff? David Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Vince is going to make The Rock show up with a paper bag over his head. He's gonna, he's, his name's going to be called Dwayne the Scissors Johnson, not The Rock. No, the best. No, but the best thing about Heath Slater's fucking is he 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 impacts fucking promos is that he just paid for everybody's cameo. They don't know who the fuck he is, but he just paid for their cameos to 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 promote him. And I liked D'Lo as well when he did his uh his little head wobble and that you're looking at the real deal and all that bollocks. It was <laughs> it was good. It was good. It was good. Impact was good as always. So uh, wow. leads us up to SmackDown Friday Night SmackDown. And he fucking leaves. All right. Right when we were about to sit there and discuss what he wanted to talk about, which is the heartfelt and probably the most powerful promo that we've ever he- held accountable to an Uso ever. We have Damn a- straight. Damn straight it was. Let's go to SmackDown real quick. We'll finish off with probably one of the best promos I've heard all year. And I think it turns someone into a superstar. We'll just Earlier go through this. Show, Early on the show, Jay Uso came to the ring and said he didn't need anyone to interview him and that Roman Reigns had to answer some questions about what happened with their match last week. Paul Heyman comes out and says that um, they'll find out uh, what Roman Reigns has to say later on tonight. So uh, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll check that out in a minute. After that, we had the, 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 the championship, the championship um, coronation where they put both belts on the fucking thing and raised it up for their ladder match on, on Sunday. And ended up giving us the match anyway for free, as we had Sami Zayn defeating AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy via pinfall in a triple threat match, which I thought was actually really good. Not as good as it's going to be on Sunday, because ladders are going to be included. But um, Sami Zayn picks the win up here, and then gets annihilated from, I think Jeff Hardy hurt him after the match. Whatever, it was it was chaos. 
as usual, but I'm so excited for this match. It's on Sunday. Um, Didn't Styles have the belts by the end of the night? I think, yeah, Styles held the belt to the end of the night. Uh, he picked, he went to the ladder, and um, he raised both belts, Yeah, which I thought was so badass. I think this match is going to steal the show if done properly. It Jeff, should. Jeff Hardy knows how to do – which, by the way, one thing pissed me off. Um, Sami Zayn, during his promo, was like, Jeff, do you even know how, how dangerous ladder matches are? I'm like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> really? If I was Jeff, I would have heard that and been like, yo, you know who the fuck you're talking to, right? All right, but, but anyway. But anyway. I feel like I'm watching Paranormal Activity looking at Matt Fox. <laughs> nah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather him stay off of that stash. Yo, watch your mouth, bro. <laughs> Fine, yo. You know, you know what? Fuck you, bro. Seriously, I'm being offended all over the place. But you, you see this. Fine. I won't show my face. You can see the <laughs> alien That's from... Better. That's better. That's better? I got okay. you. So anyway, this is me talking. So uh, after that, we had Otis attacking John Morrison after him and Tucker um, Tucker and um, Otis realized that Miz's lawsuit was fake. Uh, Miz vowed to drag Otis through the system endlessly if he did not relinquish the contract. We all know what this is going to do. It, it'll be Otis versus Morrison, and the winner takes the briefcase. And this is a good avenue to get John Morrison uh, the briefcase to win the championship eventually, which that's the – we know Otis ain't cashing this shit in. It's not happening. Um after that, Bailey cuts a promo about her plans for Nikki Cross the Clash of Champions. Uh, what do you guys thought about Bailey's promo work here? Because she's getting better by the week for me. I love Bailey. I think she's doing a great job as a heel. I listen. I I've, ever since she became heel, Bailey has been the better Bailey. Honestly, I don't want to see her come back. I don't. I don't see the face come back at all. Me either. Me either. I think it's working. No. She said when she beats Nikki Cross, she'll. I would have liked Bailey a lot better if she came out this way. Yeah, right? What she'd, have, she'd have liked her better if she came out that way. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So. I didn't like the whole hugging gimmick, and I feel like Bailey's just like, I lost it. Like, she's lost it for me because I just, so I love, like, this whole, I like this Bailey, but Bless I you, sir. don't like Bailey because she put a bad taste in my mouth in the beginning. I agree. I agree. Bailey I never liked the like hugger gimmick. I thought it was stupid. The hugger gimmick was straight up for, like, jokes and laughs, and then it was like, okay, well, what are you really doing here? Um, It was a fucking, it, it had an end. Event. She was like the female type Cena esque. Yeah, yeah, it was very weird. I, I was there. I was there for her debut on NXT on Raw, her first um, appearance, and that crowd went nuts. But um, it was it, it died quickly. After that, we had Nakamura defeating Grand Metalik in a pinfall uh, via pinfall. This is a quick uh, spruce up match for their tag title match on uh, Sunday. Um, Nakamura won by the King Shasa, of course. But after the match, Cesaro attacks Lince Dorado and Kalisto declined to intervene. Which, because of that, uh, El Dorado, or um, Lince Dorado, sorry, um, shoves Kalisto and walks El Dorado, as in the car? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Is <laughs> or the, what's the movie in DreamWorks? Um, the, the, the Journey to El Dorado. Right. <laughs> um, Dream, uh, that's a throwback. But, but um, this basically tells me one thing. They're losing on Sunday, and is going to walk, walk away from the match, and he's going to turn heel. Listen, they gave him facial hair. They gave him fucking eye contacts. He's turning heel this Sunday. It's, it's happening. Uh, also, on facial hair makes you a heel. <laughs> facial That's hair right. makes you a heel, 100. Ben is a dastardly heel. You see that beard? Um, up next we have uh, King Corbin defeating Matt Riddle via pinfall. End of days. It was a solid, but it was way. Too, it was a solid match, but it was way too long. Um, Riddle, and then this is what I like about SmackDown. Riddle loses, and they interview him post match, and he says, "Losing sucks, but it won't stop him in his journey to continue to grind and be the best he can be." Um, those post matches interviews make a big difference with a person's character and progression for me, and I, I think it worked there. Uh, and finally, we, before the, the moment we, I'm look, I was looking forward to all day. Lacey Evans defeats Alexa Bliss to be a disqualification after the Fiend's lights and music hit, and Alexa Bliss snaps violently, turning and destroying Lacey Evans to the count of five, and a DQ uh, happened. Uh, Post match, Bliss gave Lacey Evans a sister, another sister, Abigail, and was laughing at the fiend on screen. It looks like Sister Abigail will be will is one hundred percent happening, guys. And I think Alexa Bliss is the perfect fit to do it. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about? Oh, with oh, with her nice little pink red oh. I love it. I love it. And I think Alexa Bliss by herself was getting real, real bland. So for her to do this is a good change up, and I think it's needed for the fiend as well. I think they both need each other, which makes any, if that makes any sense. What do you think about that, Red? Yeah, I'm, I've been waiting for this for the longest time. I know I, I could be hypocritical because, like, oh, now she's in a trance, whatever. But if you're doing something that 
it's 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 fun. It's like just like when you've seen the Undertaker do his mystical shit or whatever. If you do something fun, make the character uh, seem relatable, connected, and it's a longer winding story because this this has been happening since you know Bray had the I mean excuse me Braun had the title and such like yeah, that. And that, the fiend and the fiend has always been taken seriously and as a dark threat. It's not like he fucking was. Um, um, throwing a fucking quinceanera last week. That dude's always been dead serious and fucking dark. Right. So it it, it it works. I see. I see a lot that could be done with this. I mentioned earlier that we can talk about um the 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 possibilities of, of them having a good run with championship belts together, and it 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 could be something interesting. Which, by the way, quick side note. I think um hot take here. Um, Alexa Bliss does the sister Abigail better than Bray Wyatt. <laughs> She does that shit clean. That is, she she knows how to do that move for real. Well, listen, she she has a better gift because she has to deal with people who are lighter, so she's fine. That is true. So, but she's tiny, and, she, and Lacey Evans pretty big compared to her. Yeah, that's true. That's, that is true. So, but like I said, Alexa Bliss does it way better than Bray, in my opinion, which it's a good move. And finally, I think Red has it on the screen. The moment we were looking for, Jay Uso comes out asking for answers. Uh, what Roman Reigns uh, about the look that happened last week, which was a grin, basically the grin of "I gotta fuck my family up, don't I?" Uh, here we go. This is a courtesy of WWE. Red, play it, and we'll talk about it after. Hey, all week they've been asking me about the look, Oos. How I'm supposed to see if my back turned? I don't know about no look, but let's ask Roman. Oos, what's up with the look? What is it, Oos? You on my side of the story. <laughs> to be honest, Oos, I would give you this title if I could. But the truth is, you wouldn't even know what to do with it. You don't understand the accountability, the responsibility of being on top. You don't understand the weight and the pressure from being the face of the WWE. How could you? It's not your fault. You're a twin. Your entire life, you've depended on your brother. And I'm not saying you're half the man that I am, no. You are one half of the greatest tag team of our generation. And because of that, our family and I are so, so proud of you. But our family depends on me. Our family relies on me being the tribal chief. That's who I am in this life. It ain't you. It won't ever be you. Because it'll always, always be me. Fuck what Usama J said. What the what fuck what Roman said, man? Shit. Why can't I be the one to provide for the family, Oos? Why can't I provide for my wife and my kids, your nephews? I've been battling this my whole life. You've been number one, Oos. You've been on top. There goes the big dog. There goes Roman Reigns. There goes Mr. Main Event, Mr. WrestleMania. You know what they say when they see me, Oos? Shit. Which one is Which he? Which one are you? <laughs> this shit is fire, y'all. Racist. Okay. After Sunday, when they ask me who am I, they gonna know. They gonna say, I know you, Oos. You the one that beat Roman Reigns at Class of Champion for the Universal Championship. And that right there, Oos. That right there will be me!
Not done, not done. And two nights for Jey Uso to realize his dream. But for Roman Reigns to... Oh, my God! Reigns with a Superman punch! I don't just feed my kids with this title. I don't just feed your kids with this title. I feed a whole family with this title. My family needs me to have this title, and you want to take it from me? You're going to take your payday. You're going to take the ass whooping that comes with it. But you will never take this title. And you will never take my place at the head of the table. I'm Maui, bitch. Finally, let him be him. Thank you. Before Thank anyone starts, you. Because we're, we're, before anyone starts, because we're gonna roundtable this. Um, when I saw this live, I not only had goosebumps, but I gave this a standing ovation because they managed to sell me a squash match. Okay, and granted, it's going to be a squash match, but that's not a bad thing. They're making this bloodline storyline work. And before you guys start, because um, whoever wants to go first can go, but I think this made Jey Uso a star. Not a star as main event super, uh, WWE champion star, but this showed that he could cut a promo better than anywhere in that fucking locker room, in my opinion. I'll go to a little bit first. A little bit. What's your thought about it? Which one is he? Is that the, which <laughs> one? <laughs> no. Which Uso is which that? One? Which Which Uso is that? That's not the one that's married to Naomi, right? No. See, I, I, isn't that terrible? I, I honestly did not know that. I do not know the difference between these Uso people. <laughs> me neither. But no, this, uh, no, but like, it, it gave me rock vibes. <laughs> right, right. I, I like that. It, it did. Like, with this whole, but you know, you they gotta, I, it's funny how Roman couldn't cut a promo to save his life, and then they gave him somebody to cut promos for him, and here he is finally cutting his own promo. Well, he cut. He could. He could always cut a promo. Like he, the guy is is, is a personality. He's character. No, he never cut a good one. No, because they give him bullet points and they tell him and to memorize around, a script. This time, around, this time around, you can clearly see that this is Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman creating this promo work for him. Right. What's your thought, Ben? Because I know you didn't watch SmackDown, but you just saw this. Yeah, that's the first time I've seen that. Uh, I don't like how they say "oos" all the time. That annoys me because it just reminds me of um, Juventud Guerrero, even though that's juice, but still. <laughs> Um, I generally was a little bit. I didn't know if that was the drunken Uso or the normal Uso. Um, no, no, no. He's the he's the normal one. The drunken one is the one that's married to Naomi. Well, right, the, okay. Well, the Samoan. No, 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 there was Samoan. They all get the drunk. drunk. What are you talking about? I know the it's drunken. So we still don't know which Uso he is. I know the drunken Uso is married to Naomi, but I didn't know if that was him or no. that was the other one. I don't know. They look the same. No, that's Jay. Um, no. Samoans have got fucked up families, clearly. Um, but no, I, I liked that. I thought that was really good. No, and wait a minute, I might be wrong. Like, Ro Reigns, yeah, his promos weren't good when he was a face. Clearly, the guy's destined to be a good fucking heel because that was a really good pro. That was a really good promo on Reigns' behalf. So that I, I'm with Olski. I think they they sold a squash match really, really good there. I don't think they'll make. Is that, is that Jey Uso? They will make Jey Uso look really weak, but Reigns will kick fuck out of him after the match is finished as well anyway. So, yeah, that was really good. I enjoyed that, to be fair, apart from the permanent use of Oos, which annoys me. Uh, which, by the way, yeah, I am right. Uh, Jey is not the one that's married to... Jimmy the one that's married to uh, to Naomi. And um, for for you to know, Oos is basically a, ter a, a brotherly terminology that, that in the Samoan culture, when you say Oos, it's like saying brother. Okay, I still don't need to say it though. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I I thought honestly, this is a bloodline feud. These these always are hot shots that actually work well when done when done properly. Heyman is basically sitting there. He's taking lead on this shit. Get this shit going on. And for him to cut for Roman to cut the promo that he did after hitting uh, Jay with the Superman punch without a mic and letting the camera mic pick it up. 
is genius. And that's how a lot of this kind of wrestling and this kind of promos need to be done instead of everything having to be hot mic and stuff. When, you, when you're able to pick up a feed like that and still get the emotion and feeling from it, that goes to show you that that's when you're doing something right in wrestling. Hair standing. Really the- Hair standing. Are they still using like Reigns' old music and shit? Well? They yeah, but are, they're, yeah, but, he's getting but they're saying it's changing. I think by Sunday it'll be changed. And I th- he needs a new finisher as well because I think he does a spear very, very weak. He needs a more powerful <laughs> finisher, I think. The thing with um, Roman is... Are they going to make him more Samoan now? As a, because now that they keep pulling... Instead of the big dog? I could assume so. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Uh, um... The tribal chief, which um, read me a good point about no mic. It kind of gave me like Jake the Snake vibes. Where like I know no, I know every single person who watched that live was doing this. Exactly. Like you have to but lean in. I I I want to know what the fuck he's about to say because you guys sold me on a fucking amazing main event for fucking Clash of Champions on Sunday. And he can, and he and he pulled and he pulled back the curtain. He says, "Take the pay back, take the paycheck," because that's what they do when they get into a big main event. They they get a bump and they yep. pay for that match. Yep. Take that money and run. And you know, it, it, the ass bean that comes with it. Yep, I thought it. I thought it was. I thought it was great. I thought it was beautiful the way it was done. Bro, probably the best promo you've ever heard Roman and Jay ever do in their lives. I think. I think that made Jay uh, a mid Carter singles. I think he could become a. I, I think that promo alone showed his worth. So, um, isn't Jay? That's, Jay's also the one that's never been hurt, right? No, he's never been hurt. Right, and he's always been consistently in a, the in the. Um, healthy has been has always been there. Yeah. So yeah, and this is could, and if he could cut promos like that, I'm waiting for him to come out with the chant. I'm waiting for him to come out on Sunday with that whole Uso tribal chant thing. Fun like, fact. Who's the, who's, who's the head chief now, bitch? Fun <laughs> fact, and I believe this is true because I, I I had to do the research and I checked it up. But a fun fact: Jay Uso is the only main event roster member right now that's pinned fucking Roman Reigns. That's when they were the tribal Usos and they and they, and uh, Roman was part of the Shield. Wow. Yeah. Wow, fun fact. Yeah. There you go. So, um, just to close it out, who was everyone's MVP this week? I'm going to start with Ben. Uh, it's tough on between Eddie Kingston because his promos are fucking fire. Uh, and I do have a question after we've done this quickly. Um, but I'm going to have to just for the fact she took the fucking pile driver, which is an horrible move for anybody to take, and she took it so well. And I don't really like her because she's weird looking and shit. But my MVP is uh, Katie Forbes, which is wow. a bit random. A uh, little bit. Who's your MVP this week? You can pass on me. I really didn't. I only like half ass watched anything. Aww. If I have to pick, I'll say Kyle O'Reilly because, you know, undisputed. You know? That's not a bad pick. I'm just looking forward to him pick. and Balor. That's a good pick. Yeah, that's a good I'm pick. I'm looking forward to a match between him and Balor. I feel like it would be a really good match if nah. done correctly. Nice. Uh, Matt, who's your who's your MVP? My MVP is Jay Uso. That promo he cut him and I wish I could pick him and Roman as a group. But if I have to pick one person, I'll pick Jay because um, Jay Uso came out with a last minute storyline that no one thought would get over, and they managed to make it a bloodline storyline. Which, by the way, they even got footage of Rikishi and Roman Reigns' grandfather for this storyline. Okay, and it's, they're they're selling it to the moon here. It's the most over product in wrestling right now, in my opinion, and it's a squash match. At the end of the day, Roman's killing this dude, but they did such a good job of building this so much that Jay Uso, in my opinion, has become a mid card star. So I'm going with Jay Uso. That promo work cannot be overlooked. And my MVP this week, I was going to give it to Austin Theory because I thought he was phenomenal against Damian Priest this past week. I thought he was. It, it, it just shows people why this kid should be on the roster, and if, and if they keep him on a straight and narrow path, and making sure that he doesn't do you know pick up bad habits, he'll be great. But I have to give the MVP this week to something that we didn't get to talk about this week, and hopefully we'll start doing more of it and, and watching. And it's got to give it to a promotion. Ring of Honor brought, came out and did the pure championship tournament. And from what I've been seeing, it's fucking amazing. Ben, you will love it. Yeah, you it's great. They, they, it. They, 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 brought, they brought it back to simpler times. They're giving some young, young cats a shot. And it's a and, sports uh, there's field. There's no glitz, glam. Nope. There's no glitz and glam shit. It's straight to the basics of wrestling. It's a sports field that AEW said that they were going to give us, and it's nowhere near what the fuck Ring of Honor is doing. Uh, even a guy like Dalton Castle, who is the flamboyant uh, fucking kind of wrestler, they made him look like an athlete, a pure badass. So I give it to Ring of Honor and their pure tournament as the MVP this week. 
I've got a question for you guys before we go. Sure. So it's a tough question, but who's pro- whose promo works better, Eddie Kingston or MJF? Oh, who who's working? I mean, who's I mean with- this right? because I know MJF's a funny and he doesn't miss a, doesn't miss a word, but when Eddie Kingston does his promos, I actually fucking believe what he says. No, I, you know what? I'm gonna and and if you want my vote first, it's Eddie Kingston. Eddie MJF has is a great promo guy, and he, but he has places to go. Eddie Kingston has 18 years of this work, and he came out this week out of nowhere because Lance Archer had has COVID and made that match fucking meaningful. That dude talks straight hood shit like some dude on the block. If he fuck like like straight up, that's like that promo work is always insane. It's believable. It's serious, and he's and, and he's badass while saying it. When he says, "Yo, I want I want Moxie to come out," so I look at him in the eyes before I fight him. I'm like, "This some shit out of the hood, like out of the streets," and, and and it works. It works. He's believable. He's strong with his words, and he talks hood. Which, if you're not from New York or whatever like that, you're like, "Oh my god." I'll go. I'll go and say. Um... MJF, but by a thread because at least Eddie had 18 years to build on working it to that level. Although majority of that is his his personality and his and his you know That's basically who is, who is he is. But with MJF for him being so young and having the confidence to grab the mic and fucking take it over in a in an arena full of fucking promo masters like uh, fucking uh, uh, Cody, a uh, uh, Dustin. Uh, Jericho, you're 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 in the lion's den of guys who who can cut a fucking promo and e- easier said than done than anybody else can. For MJF to do it as effortlessly that he can, I'll give it to MJF. A little bit. You got something to say to that? I I always give it to MJF. I I just I mean I, Eddie Kingston can cut a great promo and like like Matt said like the New York gangster, but MJF could like literally like I think he's on. I don't want to compare him to Chris Jericho. But like I, I, he can talk, and he can like the man can fucking sell you anything. Yeah, he, really he can. can. He can, and 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 I, I hope I hope well, you know. Um, I just wish his ring work would like coincide with how great he is on a microphone. And I appreciate that question, Ben, because Little Bit's perfect. Uh, she said it perfect. Like they're so close, but MJF is like that dude can make you feel like a worthless piece of shit in ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Eddie Kingston can make you feel like you're about to get your ass kicked in 10 seconds uh, uh, in the streets with a bar of soap. So, you know, so on some real shit, they both are like the best promos in AEW. All right, guys. So once again, thanks again. Yeah. Thanks again for being a part of Get Vocal. And of course, Turbuckle Tabloid with our viewing of Around the Square Circle. So once again, thanks again, as always, to Ben the Bread and Little Bit for chiming and stopping in this week. Yes. And guys, make sure you always download, subscribe to... Turbo Tabloid on Get Vocal as well as on all social media outlets and all podcasting outlets. We're everywhere. Now on Amazon Music, ladies and gentlemen, we're everywhere. So don't say you can't find us because we are there. So, guys, thanks again once again for partaking and um, talk to you guys later. 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 Later, yeah. Turbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Turnbuckle Tabloid.